just snap to drink drink the fuck out jumped up on my sister's head and just started clawing the shit out of her and then she eventually was able to wrangle it off and throw it out and then after that she never came back Yo, what's good in the hood, y'all? Back with a uh, Subway video. I haven't done Subway in four months. I looked back and it's been exactly like four months since I've done Subway. So uh, it's that time of the year when companies send out coupons. So I just had these Subway coupons for buy one six inch, get another of the same or lesser value for free. Let's, uh, let's use that. Save some money because times are tight. So I'm going to open these bad boys up. I'll, sh I'll show you which I, what I got. Um, I may keep the crinkling of the packages or I may not, depending, because sometimes it's too loud. This one's a BMD. It says right on the front. What BMD actually stands for is Big Meaty Taste, if you guys didn't know. Pepsi.
the time where everybody is making all these plans for a new year, new me. So good. That the fast food chains send out all the all the savings coupons right at the new year. The same sauces. A little bit of sub sauce. Ranch and Chipotle. people out there 
if they came out cool. Yo, 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 test video, might be sketchy though, I don't know, but I hope she works. She works. What up, yo? Doing Subway today, just gonna talk to you normally, uh, been away for a bit, just lots of shit's happened, uh, yeah. I'm really pissed off. Yesterday, I went to do a video for you guys and it was going to replicate my most popular video that I have, which is my um, Burger King video with the poutine. Uh, Whopper poutine, poutine being a delectable, authentic Canadian treat that a lot of American people Tend to see, I tend to see in the comments of uh, other videos, like, can you do a uh, Canadian style poutine? And it's gonna do that for you. I also got some onion rings. I put that on the burger. The burger was looking hella proper. Whoever made it was just on point as fuck. Like, there's just everything was really, really hitting for me. And then I, uh, Blaze salt and vinegar. Yeah, I was really working out, and then I just made the bonehead ass uh, error of um, not checking my phone to see like what the memory amount was. And I did delete like all of my videos and shit, but I guess I had downloaded um, a new some new apps that I kind of didn't account for in my memory usage and. Anyways, my fucking phone, the screen on it is broken as shit, so I can't film with like the flip and see myself. I have to do it how I'm doing it now, where I like start and run, and because I can only see just the camera, I can't even see what's going on right now. And so yesterday, I I made like this whole Burger King video, it was all set up, everything was looking dope, and then seven minutes in, the fucking the video cut out when I didn't know it, right? So, I mean, <laughs> wow, unreal. If you could have been a fly, a fly on the wall, just to see myself like eating and talking to myself, which this is, but like with my camera not even recording it after like a few minutes. So I spent like 20 good minutes just eating, talking to myself. Anyways, let's uh, get to the point here on this video, and then I can tell you about just whatever, some stuff. Okay, so. Italian BMT. Um, Italian herb and cheese bread, toasted. Cheddar cheese. Um, so pepperoni, salami, ham. 
lots of lettuce, tomato, green pepper, and red onion, and pickle, and banana pepper. Oh, and chipotle. Chipotle Southwest sauce. And ranch sauce as well, if I didn't already say that. And I have additional ranch to make it more, uh, more ranch delicious because the fuck was that? I'm like, nobody can get to my patio. There it is. That's the patio. The sun's going down. It's about, it's about 8 o'clock or so. Just there after. But yeah. We like things extra saucy around here. I really fucking kind of hate that. There's something about when you get Subway. A, they don't put the sauce on correctly. They just drag it down the middle of the line. And they like push it together and it just smushes out the edge on the side. Why they don't like go side to side, even like uh, squirt. Beyond me. Sandwich artist. Sorry if you work it that way. But maybe employ that technique. And, but I guess if you work it that way, you kind of just don't give a fuck. The customers are probably pretty annoying, would be my guess. Everybody's asking for light this, extra that. Just a little bit more. So. But that being said, if you're a subway worker, I know that, you know, the idea is not to give the whole fucking shit away for free because like I know your boss or whoever's gonna be like, why is our toppings levels? So, so low and this that and you know I'm sure you have to kind of hit a certain spec but chances are people are going to ask for extra of a lot of shit all the time so I find myself having to constantly and it's awkward you have to kind of like prod them to give you more of something Anyways, oh, also another point on Subway, sorry, I just have to say it. I have trouble understanding why, unless there's some sort of like a sales incentive or whatever, maybe within your, like within your rest or your store, I should doubt there is. Why do they insist on pushing the combo on you? It's like, unless you're the store owner, then I get it. But if you just work there, who cares what the customer spends? You're not getting tipped out on it. You're not getting compensated for making your boss more money. What do you mean if you are, let me know. But I got it. So I'm going to ways. Lays to me are the McDonald's fries of chips. They're just my favorite, like standard go to, light, crispy. Just like, probably just the best chip for me. Salt and vinegar being probably my favorite. Ketchup being 
Probably my third favorite. All Dress being my second favorite. So, it was my birthday this past weekend. On Saturday. Unfortunately, I got kind of sick heading into the weekend. But I didn't phase me, it didn't stop me. Y'all know me, still the same OG. So, I started kicked it off on my birthday on a Saturday. My my girl met me at my crib. She brought over a gang of. Vodka, beer, ciders, park supplies, food, all that shit. Said we were going to the park. There's a park down the street from my house. It's like probably the most popular one in the city. Like just everybody goes. All different walks of life. Partiers, sports players, hippies. Drum circles, baby carriages, mamas, daddies, baseball, tennis, you name it, it's happening. Everybody's having a good time. We were in the party crowd. Anyways, my girl said it was just going to be her and I, and I don't do, like, crazy shit for my birthday, but, because I'm, you know, it's just something I don't really go and make a big deal out of. Then all of a sudden, in the park, all of a sudden, there's all these people that I knew. Surprise. So I had, like, a surprise birthday in the park. With some down ass, some down ass chicks that my um, girlfriend lined up for me. These are all people that I worked with previously. Service industry is server. You meet a lot of girls more than you know. There's more girls than guys. Let's say that guys are generally bartenders. So, anyways. Got a bit, a little bit lit fam in the park. Till the evening. And then my girl said we had to dip. To come back to my spot. To get ready and continue to turn up. So back change clothes a bit <clears throat> acquired some party favors I'm not gonna name names but when it's your birthday sometimes you do drugs while you drink That next half dough. This thing's very filling already. So yeah, we uh, start getting ready and, you know, get a good buzz on because the, uh, well, here's, I haven't told you this part yet, but my girl got tickets to um, City in Color, which was playing at a place called Molson Amphitheater in Toronto. It's down by the water. Pretty sick venue, so. You want to get pretty pre-turned for that because it's expensive.
expensive as fuck. And, uh, yeah, when we got there, the beers were, we got like those really tall, like the tall cans, like the, it's like 710 or, Maybe it's, no, maybe it's like a 1.4 or something like that. A liter? I don't know. It's like two and a bit beers or something. But anyways, it's 20, 20 bucks a beer. So. We got nice and pretty turn. But yeah, head down there. Had a good night out. Concert was sick. Dallas Green is a exceptional live performer. Very, very good voice. No auto tune required. More of a Chiller, sad, depressing ish mood though, just because that's the style of music it is, but that was fun. It was good for like a lovey dovey birthday celebration. Dipped out of there. Cabs were basically impossible to get, and the ones that you could get, they were charging 40 bucks for like. Like we were like this, that, like, no, we weren't even going like very, very far. And they're like 40 bucks flat, right off the bot, right off the hop. I was all drunk by the, by the third cab that told me that, I leaned in the window, <laughs> leaned in the window and with my fingers, I went, I'm all fucked. I'm just, hashtag fuck boy. <laughs> they called him a hashtag fuck boy. He did not like that. He was having none of it. He stopped the cat, like, popped it into the park and just got out and was like, I was like, later, man. <laughs> so yeah, I eventually got out of there. Just came back to my house, drank. We had aspirations to go out, but we were already just been drinking since the afternoon, so just kind of chilled at my spot and drank till, I don't know, three, four, something like that. Woke up the next day, late in the day. That was Sunday. Uh, my boys were like kind of popping off in music. Uh, they were in town because they had to play, not had to play, they were, I guess, honored to or given the opportunity to do the, they kicked off the red carpet show at the MMVAs. So if any of you guys watch the MMVAs, red carpet, those were my boys performing. Two Heads is a song. Coleman Hell is the band name. Anyways, they were in town for the night, so got to meet up with them after and just go to our local uh, our local watering hole, just where we always go and just know a lot of people there. So I had like a, another like second small, you know, good friends, local neighborhood joint style birthday ton up. Um, that was also Father's Day. Shout out to my dad and shit. Back when I was born, it was actually Father's Day the day I was born, so 
I was my dad's gift. And my grandpa told him that he got what he deserved. Because I guess he was kind of a punk growing up. And I th think my grandpa knew I was going to give him a run for his money in that department. But no, I have a good relationship with them. We're chill. He's good. He's just like, yeah, he's like the dopest dad. Like there's, there's nothing bad to say about the guy. So, <coughs> and you know, I've never been to jail or anything. So we good. Hmm. Sunday, yeah, uh, Sunday, wind, wind down. Uh, Monday was just a hangover, sleepy day. Me and my girl got like way too much Taco Bell and just laid in bed. Watched scary movies and had a taco, had a taco extravaganza. Fucking filling. I hope that now that the camera's turned the other way, the quality might actually be better, I think, than the other flip, flip way. Taco extravaganza, <coughs> and then Tuesday I had to be home in the afternoon from like. 12 to 5 for the window of opportunity for the fucking technicians to come and finally f repair my washing machine. It's been like a month. In that month, they've made like four different trips. And each time, it's just been some new bullshit. And it's just like every fucking time, it's like, why can't you just fix it now? So... Nothing like that ever works out like it should, though. With people repairing their stuff, I find. So now I've working laundry again. And I've just been doing all the fucking laundry. Bed laundry. Towel laundry. Sock laundry. Shirt laundry. Every type of laundry. Dish towel laundry. Every laundry in the world that you can imagine, I've been doing. And now tomorrow, I have a job interview. Excuse me. Well, I have a job interview because the place that I've been working at for a year and a half and that I opened with these guys just randomly shut down out of fucking nowhere with essentially no, no heads up, no hey, like in a couple weeks we're going to be shutting down, get yourself prepared, get a new job, save money, like. None of that. But that's the story of our next video, so. This is done. I'm V full. And I'm gonna have to come around back and shut you down. The entire goal of this video is to make you crave Subway at 3 in the morning.
I just want to crush these Subway sandwiches. I haven't eaten all day and I've just been craving this sandwich in particular and uh, I got double meat on it too, so double meat, double the treat. Let's get right into it. So it's a Italian BMT, probably my favorite sub. When I was in there, they were just fresh baking the herb and cheese bread. It was like moments away, but I just didn't have the patience, so I just had to get white, but I wish it was on herb and cheese. So lettuce, tomato, cucumber, green pepper, hot peppers, red onion, all the fixings essentially. No spinach or olives though. Ranch, chipotle, uh, like Southwest sauce, and house sauce. So extra saucy. Subway gods had to have been looking out for me today too because they have the daily sub deals but I had no idea that today, I had no idea that today was Italian BMT. So it was on for cheap. Let's ranch the shit out of this. So I double meat it because double meat is so good. Mm. First six, let's head into the back six. We'll call it a 
call this side Mozart because it seems to be a little more well composed. The other one was slopping everywhere. heavy-duty. So it brings me to the question for you guys I haven't asked in a long time. I just think we're at a point, it's like, what do you guys want? Any specific requests? More ASMR? More mukbang story time. More something like this. More just eating, no talking videos. Um, maybe a Q&A. We could be at a point where we can do a QA and a again. I'd be down for a Q&A if you guys are. vegan viewers are just shook right now. Where are all my meatheads at though? Let's see some likes from the meatheads. Oddly enough, one of my favorite subs is just a veggie sub. I mean, I've thoroughly grossed myself out in this video, so I'm sure a lot of you out there are going to be spouting some hate comments for sure.
the more I've looked into this trend that's on the internet right now. So many people are doing mukbangs now and ASMR and eating. Children, old people. This is a weirdly legit thing that's like actually like truly happening. That was a meaty bite. Left with a bread nub. Whatever. That's it for that one. A little different. We'll see how it goes. Till the next one. Eat good. Live well. Stay true. Peace. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Eat good, live well, stay true. What is going on you guys? Back with another mukbang story time today. Crushing some subway. I have a Italian BMT. BMT can be interpreted any way you want. From what I know, I think it's called Big Meat Trio. Could be Big Meaty Taste. Could be Bun Mouth Totally? I don't know. Bad, bad one, but you know, I'm trying here. But yeah, BMT, I doubled up on the meats. Cause when you have Subway, you gotta double up. Ooh, you gotta double up, double up. But I guess I shouldn't be singing R. Kelly because we all know, let me fix myself here in the mirror. Uh, we all know about the R. Kelly fiasco he's kind of old news at this point but i do love how he's just losing his mind on uh, in in the media and stuff but uh he's in jail now i guess and you know he's a little bit of a child molesty sort of rapist thing and um uh, while we're on that subject let's uh let's 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 link that to my story time and talk about uh young love um, the story time I'm going to talk about is between two appropriate aged people, uh, myself and, 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 a, and a girl, and then there's some other dudes involved in a sense. But uh, let's talk about my first real like deep crush back in the old grade seven days. Uh, you know, I had crushes before that, okay, uh, coming up right from, you know, having my, landed my first makeout at grade two, you know, toot my own horn, but uh, yeah. I had crushes on the come up, but nothing like my grade seven, eight crush. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a story behind that and eat this sucker. This sucker right here. What do you need to know about it? You need to know that it has double meat. That's first off. Double meat, double the fun. That's what she said in a double penetration scene. I don't know, maybe. Uh, hopefully she got paid more. Double meat, double the fun. Lettuce, tomato, pickled cucumber, onion, green pepper, banana peppers, subway sauce, house sauce. It's like a vinaigrette dressing. Chipotle and ranch. Got 12 inches and we got to get it in. So... Couple cukes, you're off to the side. 
your front and center. Y'all know me, still the same OG. Gotta get a bite low key before I go to the story. Oh my God. How do you slurp a sandwich? How do you slurp a sub? Just like how I did it. That's how. That's how you slurp a sub. You know what I mean? It's saucy in there. Mm. So I adjusted the lighting today. I think it should be better. Anyways. Tell you a story about this girl she's like one of my deepest crushes ever like really emotionally played on my heart you know like that puppy love grade seven love so there's this girl in my school she's great ahead of me uh she's Blonde, had glasses, but like sandy blonde. Very cute and innocent style girl. Mm. But a lot of the boys were feeling this chick, right? She was attractive, she was hot. I think another factor that played in it is she was more developed. She was growing a chest. She was getting a pair and, you know, other girls around weren't quite on her level in terms of their pair. Like she was, you know, doubling down on her pair. So. She had a lot of good things going for her. But anyways, I was in grade six and a lot of dudes, we all knew she was attractive and stuff. So she was in grade seven. At that point, you're like grade six, grade seven. She doesn't even know I exist. I'm not even on the radar because you don't really intermingle with grades. You like stay, you play on the playground with your grade. Like everybody stays within their grade. At least that's how it was at my school. So the next year she was moving up to grade eight. We're moving into grade seven, but what was happening was there's going to be too many kids for one whole grade seven class. So they did a grade seven uh, class and then a grade seven, eight split. And the grade eights were on like, they didn't have a lot of grade eights. So they're like, we're going to take four. I don't know why it was four, but it, it was like, I guess there was like 32 kids and they just, the, the, they're like, we can't have 36 kids in a grade seven class. So we're like, we're going to put four kids into a grade seven, eight split. So by some lottery looks so good. Oh my God. The sub is actually amazing right now. By some weird chance, um, me and like my best friend and then two other dudes who were solid, like they were also my really good friends too. We got moved, uh, into the grade seven, eight split. So now I'm in grade seven, but I'm kind of in grade eight. You know what I mean? I'm getting a taste of grade eight. Like I'm getting a little dip in my toe in the grade eight pond. And the grade eights had the hotter girls. My year, my grade, we had dusty women. Like they were trash. Like we had no real good outlooks, like no, no, no promise. Uh, maybe one or two, but they were so like reserved and whatever. We had a couple like other sort of like girls that were, they were fun to play like spin the bottle and like chicken with and stuff, but they, you know, they weren't like hot. They were just like had boobs or like a little more like 
less reserved, I guess I should say. Like they were down to make out and stuff and do stuff, but they were a little more dirty. Let's let's just say trash bin styles. Anyways, so they weren't like the quality ones. And even like I was saying, my grade didn't have much quality. So anyways, I go into grade eight. Grade eight's about the banging chicks. Um, so I'm in the seven eight split. At first, the people in the seven eight split were like reluctant to accept the fact that they had four grade sevens in their class. Like, oh my God, as if we have to have grade sevens. Like they're plagued by the four grade sevens being in their class. On our side, we're like, fuck yeah. Like we're gonna infiltrate. It's a glow up here. Like we're gonna learn about this in grade grade eight shit. We're gonna, you know, probably smoke some weed maybe. Like kind of shit. So we get in there. And now my crush for this girl is like full on because she used to be someone who I just would like see out at recess or see in the hall and be like, oh my God, she's so hot, but never talk to her because we weren't in the same grade. So now I'm having to do like, there's times I'm like in group projects or like I'm getting to sit by her and stuff. But the problem was, is that my my best boy and like the four grade sevens essentially we all were crushing on her like everybody all the dudes were into her even some of the grade eights obviously too luckily for us the grade eight dudes our competition were so dusty they were so brutal these dudes were just like nerdy they weren't cool whatever so some way somehow the uh the grade eight girls all start taking a liking like as as time goes on in in the season like in school the, the grade eight girls start realizing like the dudes in our grade suck like these kids are way cooler these these younger guys are way cooler so the grade seven dudes we start kind of taking over and we're like kind of running shit. We're like, we're the ones like flirting with the girls, getting like invited to like go hang out at recess, like do weird, like flirty shit at recess, like going to little like make out parties and stuff and whatever, whatever. But the girl that I had, that we all had a crush on, she was like super innocent. You know, she wasn't catching any bodies. She like, I don't even really think she had like kissed anybody before. The sub is like hitting levels right now. Levels unknown. So <clears throat> this one's for H3. Dunk my face in a bowler ranch for Ethan. It's just so good with a bunch of ranch. So anyways, me and my four boys, we're now all in a battle. We all know where everybody is at. Like, So it's like every recess and stuff. And as much as we can, we're trying to isolate her and like get it's it, We're basically playing grade seven, eight uh, bachelorette. She's the bachelorette. We're the bachelors. We're just trying to get in there. And uh, it's a battle at this point. We all we all like acknowledge between us. We're like, may the best man win. <clears throat> so everybody's kind of going for it. It's kind of flip flopping. Like sometimes she's like really into me. Sometimes she's really into my buddy. Sometimes she's into this other guy named Greg. Anyways. We're just trying to figure it out. We're like who's got the upper hand? It just seems like we're really neck and neck. 
And like I'm saying, and I said this before in other videos, this is like where the, tr like I was like in love with this girl. Like I would go home, I couldn't stop thinking about her. I, my like stomach would hurt at night. I just, or when I think about her potentially like out at like eight o'clock, like playing at a park with, or not playing, but you know, hanging out at the park with maybe one of my competitors, like I'd get all sad and shit. Never know what's going on behind the scenes. So I have all this paranoia and I'm all jealous. But at the same time, I had been doing very well. I had been getting in there, a lot of signals. The other thing too is like she was on my way home. Like we used to walk a block and a half together before we had to split. And then I lived like here and she lived here. Like we lived so close to each other. And uh, so I'd walk with her. Um, down to the end of this block, but then we'd just say, say goodbye. But her one, like her best friend was weirdly crushing on my stepbrother. So I guess like maybe her best friend was like, yo, I'm crushing on his stepbrother. He, he's crushing on you. You kind of like him, but you can't really pick out of all these boys who want you. But she basically threw me a, like a wing girl. Like she didn't wing man. She wing girled me and was like, let's, She's like, I want his, his stepbrother's attention so he can like relay that message to him and talk him into that. And then you should like go with him and we should all hang out together like in my basement, <laughs> in this girl's basement. And like, you know, so I get like this lucky in. And so this girl basically, I guess, sort of like helped me out by, by saying that. So like, it was like a Friday And I like walked her like we usually do. And then as we split, she like, she leaned in and gave me like a kiss on the cheek. And I was like, so like, oh, 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 in my head. And then like turn, we turn, walk away, try to be cool. By the time I get to my block, I'm just like, yes. Like, oh yes, like I fucking win. I knew it, I'm winning. Like I got this. So I'm like, she's mine. Talk to my stepbrother, convince him to like like this girl. They're down. Now it's on. The plan is on. We make the plan. She's like, come to my house on like Saturday and we'll just like watch stuff and like hang out in the basement or whatever. So we do that. There's like two couches. Me and her, this girl, we're getting like at this point we're like holding hands and like just doing really like soft innocent shit. And let me remind you, by this time, as a as the age that I am. I've done a bunch of weird shit with other girls that are like more dati, but this girl was, you know, she was the prized possession. She was the princess. She was like un, untainted. She had been not ever been touched, never been, never been kissed, like kind of thing, right? So that added this weird pressure because I actually really, really liked her. And I was like, you know, I was like loving on this girl. So like I had experience, she didn't, but I, I didn't want to like, spoil the fruit, you know? So I was all nervous and shit and we're just like hanging out. My stepbrother and that girl, the other girl are weirdly like, they're getting like great, pretty, like they're in like under a blanket, like making out and shit. He like gets a handy, all that. And then uh, me and her are very like, just, we're just like cuddling essentially. So it gets to the point where I, we're like cuddling a lot and hanging out. And like, I, I basically, we're kind of like seeing each other. We're going out and same with my stepbrother and the other girl. So now we're whatever, all the, the guys at school are all jealous and bummed because they didn't win. I got her and locked her in eventually 
I didn't know how to make the move on this girl. I could never figure out like how I'm just going to kiss her and stuff. So this all happened nearing the end of the year, closer to summer. So I, did, I had minimal time to like get my shit going before it was summertime. And then in the summer, I always had to leave. I had to go to like camp so I wouldn't be in the city for the summer. I just, I wasn't going to see her for a couple months, which sucked. I was like, that was my first heartbreak. Like my heart was, was hurting knowing that I'm going to have to leave for the summer. And she's like definitely going to forget me. And she's going into grade nine and I'm just going to be stuck back in grade eight. And then she'll be in high school. So it's like a couple weeks before summer. Finally, we're in this, uh, at my buddy's house. And I finally just like make the move to kiss her. And because she had never kissed before, or like properly made out, it was like the most awkward, just not fluent, not good, bad vibed kiss. Um, from that point, shit just went south. It like, I don't know, it just kind of fell apart. And then also like school was out and I was leaving to camp. So I leave, we lose touch. It sucks, whatever. all heartbroken she goes off to high school I'm all like damn what a bummer so I go through grade 8 now with my grade you know my, my grade dusty lineup grade 8's like whatever just kind of nothing special I don't think really and then uh, when it came time for me to go to high school, I was like, the high school that everybody from my school was going to go to is the one that she went to that literally everybody from my school goes to because it's like literally across the block. Like it's behind our school, like a block away. So, but everybody in my household was going to go to a different high school, all my stepbrothers and shit. And I was like kind of forced into going to a different high school. But when I was picking my high school, I was definitely considering, I'm like, if I go over there, she'll be there and she'll be in grade 10 and maybe we can like rekindle the bond. Well, that didn't happen, but can you imagine this? The girl who had never kissed up until grade eight, till she kissed me basically, By grade nine, by mid grade nine, so she would have been mid grade 10 at this point. Gets knocked up, has a child by the time grade 11 hit. Do you believe that? Let's just say. Your boy dodged a bullet on that one. I'm not trying to have no kid at grade, grade 10 and grade 11. I'm not trying to have a kid now. I'm not even really trying to have a kid. So, life unfolded as it should have. I, I didn't get involved in having a kid. I, she, she was clearly a freak inside and really just wanted to get stuffed. And apparently that all unfolded as soon as high school came around. Because uh, a lot of stuff came out about her after saying that. Basically, once she got into high school, she was... You know, on some shit. So she ended up having a kid uh, real quick, real young. And I went on my way and I did my own different high school experience. But uh, that was, that is the girl. She she fully had my heart like deep uh, in the early days. Grade 7 styles, grade 8. But I mean, to be honest, for her having a kid and such... As time went on, she remained very, very hot. She was, you know, I'd still see, you know, through Facebook and stuff, updates and pictures of her. 
over the years and still a very hot girl. Uh, oddly enough, actually, when it was, I went to college, I think I was 19, she ended up being in one of my classes in college or two of my classes in college and we knew exactly who each other were. I just hadn't spoken to her in five years, you know what I mean? Five, six years. So we were in the same classes in college, but like college is huge. Like you could sit like, you know what I mean? Um, so we didn't really rekindle anything. We, I didn't really talk to her. She had a kid at this point. She was like in a, a relationship and whatnot. So she was just living her own life. And uh, there's like too much awkward, not awkward history, but I just, it was like too, I just didn't want to like rehash old stuff so we used to sit in the same college class together for a while uh and just not we didn't really have a relationship at all so yeah that was, that was pretty funny too uh anyways uh yeah that was a good one and uh, the sub was delicious hopefully everything on this with the camera was good i think i got it figured out pretty good now do i have a saucy face probably or an allergic reaction i don't know but till the next one you guys know what to do you gotta eat good live well and stay true it's black hoodie i'm back cooking these goodies Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. <laughs> Yo, you can live well, stay true. What is going on, you guys? Uh, I know you can't see it, but I got Subway here. This angle's all fucked up, but uh, obviously very weird and different video. We are, uh, we are not in my condo. Well, we are in my condo. Uh, we're in the public. By the echo, you can probably hear I'm in a big room. Uh, I'm in a public like space that we can all use. It's communal. It's called the party room. I actually bartended a Halloween uh, event here last Friday. And I got to judge the pumpkin competition, which was pretty sick, to be honest with you. And I got paid pretty good for the event too, and I got drunk at it, so that's fun too. Uh, super random video. Uh, you ever just wake up some mornings and uh, you're just in the most confident mood ever? Like you're just to the point where it's like, it's kind of like fuck the world confidence. Like you just feel like next level. Like you're just like, fuck it. Like I can just really be and do and say anything I want. Cause why not? Like I'm going to die in the end. <laughs> it's strange. These days are few and far between, but some days I wake up and I just, I'm like, let me talk my shit. Like, who, like, who really cares at the end of the day, like, you know, for the pleasantries? Why not be confident? Most days, I would usually stress about, like, oh, I don't have, like, I can't do a video in my house and have the proper lighting and shit. Like, I know this video is going to be trashed in comparison to, like, a regular video, but I'm honestly in the state of I don't care. Like, and I just, like, I feel like I just want to talk my shit. Um, so what did I get? I got the, this is a new sub called the Montreal steak. So I, it's just their same steak seasoned with Montreal steak spice seasoning. So we'll see how true and good it is. Uh, I live in Canada, I'm by Montreal and I should be able to decipher on the palate whether this is Montreal AF or not. But anyways, there's a little look at it. I got it loaded up with some veg. I got the extra cheese. Also got some southern sweet barbecues. I know those are going directly on the sub. Do a half bag on that. As you can see. Close her up. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. All right, all right, all right. Confirmed. The Montreal steak spice, legit. Very. Montreal steaky in its nature. Very good. Mm.
Those barbecue chips match with that steak. They're very good. I got um, chipotle, ranch, and garlic aioli. I also got the toxic green Mountain Dew. I was debating between the Dr. Pepper. I said, fuck it, let me get a Dew. It's rare that I do the Dew, but the Dew is so good. Now, I can't take full credit for this unbridled confidence. Uh, I think the fact that I got lit last night and it was Halloween. I may still just be a little drunk. Has everything to do with it. But honestly, if I could live life in this state perpetually, I'd be stoked. I honestly think I just get so, so much further ahead. If I could live my life like half buzzed. Which is why alcohol is so dangerous because if taken in the right amount it just allows you to like become who you actually want to be without like over analyzing and judging yourself in moment to moment. Instead of thinking about it, you just do the thing. And when you just do the thing and don't judge yourself, like so much more just like gets done. Like and to the person observing you in that moment, like Their belief, like your belief in yourself is so real that it triggers that in them. And so that, now they're on board with you. Like they just believe in you because like you're just that, you know what I mean? When you second guess yourself, people second guess you as well because you're admitting that energy, that, that that vibe, people can pick that up. I don't know if you guys can see this. All salsa. God damn it. All right. Second half. Chips going on. Get in there. Like even when when I ordered the sub, she's like, "Do you want extra cheese?" I knew it'd be more money, but I was just like, "Yeah, fuck it, why not?" It's like it's gonna be two dollars extra. Like most people would think and stop and stress and be like, "Oh, two bucks for cheese, yeah, fuck it." My thought was, what's two dollars? Like in the grand scheme of today's prices and how outrageous the expense of everything in the world is, like what is two dollars? It's a hilarious amount of money.
I'll take a dollar as the new penny. It's honestly at the point where like, I could be going to get like my keys or something in my pocket, like two quarters could fall out. And I'm legitimately like, the inconvenience of bending over is worth losing 50 cents. Like I'm, I'm, I'm just like, fuck, fuck those quarters. Like, <laughs> and I ain't even balling like that. They could just stay down there. Somebody else could have it. That's a really good. Pretty impressed. And that extra cheese, it's helping. This extra bit of confidence actually really helped too, and I, I just went down to the bank before I got this to follow up with my uh, my fraud situation because I was robbed for like thousands of dollars. And the dude I was dealing with gave me his card the other day, told me to like call him if I have any questions. Of course I called him uh, yesterday and he didn't call back. So I went down saw him face to face and uh, he's like on the account it's showing that they were active on your uh, they were active in your like ticket as uh, recent as of today as today he's like it's just time at this point I'm like oh yeah that's fine but I was just being so like, like let's cut the bullshit. Give me the truth here, but, but I'd like, you know when you can like, read through that customer service face <clears throat> that somebody's just putting on to like appease your emotions in the moment. They're like, yeah, yeah, for sure, it's being handled. Like, it's definitely, like, for sure, like. Meanwhile, you know that he himself has no fucking clue, like, what's happening on that end of things, like, on, in the actual department. He just needs to say that so that you don't flip out, essentially, maybe. But I'm not your average person that's, like, an idiot. Like, a lot of people are blinded by their rage or whatever and they just expect to have like this person to have answers like i know this dude doesn't have answers and he's just waiting for that side to do what they need to do i get it and i'm never, never gonna be the type of person to like take my rage out on this guy Who really can't do shit about the problem anyways. What I did say to him, I was like, look man, you understand that this is shitty, right? And he's like, yeah, for sure. And I'm like, instead of me coming down here and talking to you all the time, can you just like hit me up with periodic emails regarding this case and time frames and just like be like, it's almost done or they're working like just, you know, in a few days, if nothing's changed, like just hit me on the email and be like, this is the situation. Cause I don't want to live in this like state of annoying where I constantly have to like go back to the bank and then summon him again and talk to him in person. Like it's 2018, just hit me on the text. Like,
inside of business hours. Like when you're at work and you have a free moment, like when you're on the clock getting paid, you have a free minute, as you're, as you're, as an RBC customer, just fucking hit me on the text, bro. Like just, hey man, like this is what's happening. Easy. You know, I don't need you to be telling me when you're at, like having your me time at home or anything like that. You know, I just, when you're on the clock, you get free second, just hit me up. That's it. Not hard. Anyways, that was a random video off the cuff, not in my normal space, but I was just felt like talking my shit today, so that's it. Uh, Mountain Dew is delicious. And uh, I'm going to go lay in bed and die now. All right, you can live while stay true. Peace. She's good.
record this up. It's like Christmas Eve. I, I didn't select the 12. Like, I meant to select the 12. I was so disappointed when he got here. And I realized...
<laughs> Yo. What is going on, my dudes and dudettes? All right, so as you can tell, I'm like sunburned, pre-red, the neck, painful. My mood is a little bit low today. It's kind of down. Multitude of reasons, but I figure I need to eat some lunch. Subway's right around the corner. I love it. Let me go grab it. It's been a minute since I've had it. And uh, just have a little chat, tell you about some stuff. Um, kind of a weird day so far in terms of just like some news. That's really kind of fucking with me. It's, it's affecting me different than I thought it would. Or if not that I thought I was expecting any of this news. But I've had shit like this before, sort of. But it's never really affected me this way, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. But first things first, before we do anything, shout out, as you guys can see. Still have them on. I went to Canada's Wonderland yesterday. And I ran... So I was in line buying a pizza slice. I'll tell you guys this, the whole thing on another video but there's these three little dudes and the one little dude like turned around and he's like he was super polite and he's like excuse me are you on youtube and i just like i just was so unexpected because i rarely get recognized out in public so it's only happened a handful of times and i don't know i was just in such a weird mood like i just got there it was hot out uh i hadn't really slept the night before and i just like kind of like froze and i was like yo yeah what up and gave him like a fist bump and stuff and then but I just didn't know how to engage in that moment with him. And I, all day <laughs> afterwards, like, I felt guilty. I wanted to be like, yo, like, do you, are you subscribed? Do you, what, which videos do you kind of watch? Do you like that? Whatever. Like what I just like, I didn't engage that much with him. And I was like, wow, like I really dropped the ball on that. So if you're watching, dude, shout out to you and your buddies. You guys are cool. Thank you for watching my videos. And also I hope you had a really good time at Wonderland. I'm sure you did. Uh, hope you enjoyed that pizza slice. I did. The cheese was a little bit not melted enough for me, and then the hot sauce or the tomato sauce gave me heartburn after. But in the moment, it was good. So, anyways, shout out to those dudes, those little guys. They were killing it, and I'm, I'm super like stoked that you like noticed me and said what up. And so, yeah, sorry if I like let you down to any degree. Anyways. Let me get into this, and then we'll get to talking. I don't think I need these anymore. Take off the party strap. What up? Veggie's looking nice. I'm really vibing the retro of Subway's logos and like branding right now. I love like this yellow top. It's sick to me. I don't know. I just love like their branding. Got an ice cold Dr. Pepper. Some extra ranch just in case. Miss Vicky's. The OG planes, of course, because I don't know. I just feel like sandwich and chips. You gotta get the planes. I think nothing else belongs belongs there. So this is a chicken teriyaki with. Uh, I didn't get the sweet onion sauce. I got ranch and chipotle. That's my jam. Lettuce, tomato, cucumber, green pepper, red onion, banana peppers. Bang, bang, bang. There we go. I need a bite right away. I'm starving. Mostly veggies in that bite. Mostly chicken in that bite. I'll balance it out. I'm beginning to notice that eating, once I start eating, my nose, like e eating makes my nose itch or something. Like, as I've been editing my videos, I've been noticing that so much lately. Cattle Cook Miss Vicky's. Original are so good. Unreal. It seems this uh, lady put adequate sauce as well, which is nice. The only thing I hate about Subway is I actually hate how the vegetables and the meat get segregated and you get these, these like meat bites and veggie bites and it's not all cohesive sometimes. What can you do though? 
You win some, you lose some. That's a weak ranch. Okay. So yeah, my mood is a little bit off because A, I went to Wonderland and the night before I went to Wonderland, I barely got any sleep. Like I worked super late and then I got home, I couldn't sleep. Might have got like three hours of sleep before it. Got up bright and early so that I could maximize my day there because I did buy the fast lane fast pass. So I spent a grip on my pass. Which, believe you me, is totally worth it. You don't really ever have to wait in line. You just zip up there. You go ride, 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 ride again. It's crazy. That's for another video, though. We'll talk about all that another time. Anyways, it was a long, hard day. Tons of sun. I got roasted. So that's taking a toll on my body and my energy. Also... because of the sunburn even though I was tired of shit I didn't get the most quality sleep last night so again kind of lacking on that but the main reason I'm feeling some type of way is because I woke up to a text this morning from my boss telling me about a guy that works for our company, like, because they have two restaurants. He works at the other one. He works for the other one, but I used to work with him at another restaurant for two years, like a couple years back. And he knows a lot of people in my same circle. This guy is just in my direct universe. And he's a friend to some degree he's not like you know a best friend or anything but you know we've had times together and stuff and i woke up to a text this morning finding out that he went home to visit because he's not from toronto he's from halifax and like the day before he's supposed to come back to toronto he drowned visiting his friends like his mom and friends like his trip was almost over he's about to leave and somehow i don't know the details yet but he drowned on sunday And I read that text message at like 7 this morning. And it obviously just woke me right up. And like i just been up like thinking about it since. And what's crazy to me is like. I've experienced like deaths like close to me, but I guess maybe not this close to me yet. And so random and just like tragic. And he's 20, he, I think he was like late 20s, 28 maybe. And for some reason, I just can't, I'm just keep dwelling on this thought of, of just the fact that he's dead. And it's like super weird. And that he works for the same company that I work for. And that he knows all these same people that I know. And that I know that all these other people that are really tight with him that I know must be like losing their shit. Or like, you know, just like super like in shock. Like, I can't imagine what they're going through. Like, his really, really good friends, some of them that I know really well. 
and like obviously like his mom and stuff like him having gone home to visit and then ends up passing away there in some like what I would assume is some freak tragic accident I don't know how it happened but on Halifax like that's the Atlantic Ocean so maybe he went out like in a boat like sailing or something like shit got crazy and he ran into one of those crazy like bad weather scenarios and that happened or I'm thinking he was like maybe partying and like you know like slipped slipped hit his head no one was around ended up in the water they come out his friends come out find find him <coughs> unconscious in the water dead or whatever right like I don't know so I'm still like waiting to hear details unfold Just to get some idea of what actually went down. But, I don't know. It was just a... Such a reality check this morning. I was like... There's times yesterday when I was like arguing about the littlest shit and like I was worried about money and how much money I was spending at Canada's Wonderland. And these are all things that you have to still worry about because like it's life and you're here, but it's like after hearing that this morning, I was just like, who gives a fuck if I like spent an extra hundred, two hundred dollars yesterday having a great time? Like you never know. Like I could have fucking died in a car accident on the way home or whatever. Like who gives a shit about like 200 bucks like if i didn't have it it planned in my my budgeting for the for the day right like i don't know i was just like so i'm always stressed about money like i'm all, like not stressed but i i'm very like p p careful or i plan like i don't i like to set like a budget for the day and i don't want to go over it like i want to like i don't want to blow my stack unnecessarily at like you know what i mean when i can map it out so that it's not so crazy. And I, I know it's cliche to say it, but it's true, life, your life could get snuffed out in, in a freak incident out of nowhere. Meanwhile, like, we're worrying about these things that, if that's, a, if you knew that's about to happen, you'd, you wouldn't give a shit. Another weird first phenomena that I'm experiencing with this guy's passing is that I mean, it's weird, but we do it, and it's like, it's how you find out stuff. I immediately took to social media. I went to all his profiles. Like, I have friends on everything. So I went to his Instagram, I went to his Facebook. To see... If there was anything, if anybody was saying anything on his wall, RIP, or, you know, anything about what happened. And then I've been going, to, and there was nothing. And he's been dead since Sunday, so it's Wednesday now. But he died back home in his hometown, and he lives in Toronto. So what I'm thinking is that I just don't know if all of that information has made it here yet to uh, the core group of people that I know or if like and maybe his mom and stuff are like keeping it low for right now I don't know but there's nothing happening on his social media and it's been a few days which is weird to me because of course in this day and age that we live in like 
there's always like RIPs and stuff on people who passes social media mostly like right away. You know what I mean? Like <clears throat> information travels so fast these days, right? There's like no privacy. And so you would expect that there would be something, but there's nothing. And the weirdest part of all of that is that because there's nothing on those things right now being publicly said, I almost don't believe it to be true. Like I'm almost in just disbelief. I am in shock and disbelief period. But even more so, I'm shocked that my, my belief is being affected because there's no confirmation by social media. And that's a strange, strange state of affairs, but what it is nowadays so that's just where my head's been at all day and it just got me thinking just because this is the first like guy like death that's been super close to my circle like somebody I like legitimately know and is in like I see weekly kind of thing. Like, I'll see them in passing and stuff, you know? Well, it's even crazier, too. I was just thinking, like, yeah, he's so young, but he was also, like, super academic. He was, like, pursuing a PhD. Um... He only bartends to make a little extra money just to have, like, to have money. And then outside of that, he's, like, super scholastic. He's trying to get his PhD and stuff. And then he, like, also does, like, he, like, gives out food at homeless shelters and stuff. Like, he gives his time to the community and shit. Like, he's just, like, an actually, like, active... sort of above average human in the sense of his pursuits and his passion projects and stuff. So it's just driven me up because I feel like he, pro he probably had to, he, like in his agenda with his life, he had so much more to do. And he had like really like honorable dreams and goals and pursuits like so I don't know it just keeps playing in my mind it's kind of tripped me out really but It is what it is. It's life. It happens. Have to move on, and it's going to happen more and more as you get older. So it's just strange. That being said, I hope everybody's out. You guys are all doing well. healthy not having to deal with any of this type this type of stuff this was a, a disaster at the end but it was pretty delicious nonetheless So yeah, it's going to wrap it up for this one. I just, yeah, I don't know. I want to come on here and just kind of spew about that a little bit because it's weird. And I mean, if 
any of you, you know, have anything to express regarding that sort of topic, do so in said comments. Till the next one, be safe, be healthy, eat good, live well, stay true. Yo, what up world, back with another one. Today we're just gonna be on some regular voice talking, maybe a little bit hybrid ASMR, not so hyper, but mildly nice, you know? Anyways, I did that video, uh, the other one there, and I was getting all these re replies being like, wow, this is a new tone for you. It's, it's, a, it's a little more a baritone, a little more Don't say it, but say it. Anyways, some people said it. It wasn't me. People said it. But it was more of like a... I know what you mean. It's not even about sexual. It's more like... Just like... That like... Masculine, baritone, like... Seductionary, but like... Almost like I'm reading you... Uh, you know, like a tale... Of Christmas while sipping hot chocolate or something. Like, it's more like that. It's more like a... Like a... Like a, like a warm masculine baritone which i do have the capacity to do up evidently anyways let's get off that topic and get to the main topic that is double meat spicy bmt sub okay now on top of that i got the sun chips i was in great debate in 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 the store i was like what do i get i usually always go straight for the Miss Vicky's because I love the crunch, but I love a sun chip as well. I love that like wheat, crispy, wavy thing. And these looked really good, even though they, you know what? I got duped. I realized I got duped. Garden vegetable. It's just it's new packaging. And this new packaging definitely leads me to believe it's like a healthier choice. It looks like a nice garden cream cheese. Marketers are genius. I just realized that this used to be the green pack that looked standard as shit so anyways we got the garden vegetable i do love i do love a sun chip now what i'll say is this you're gonna be like black hoodie why did you get your 12 inch sub wrapped in two well here's why and this while i'm unwrapping is a pro tip is a pro tip When you get a 12 inch and you have to travel with it, backpack, walk, whatever, wherever you're gonna go, go do whatever it is, you get it wrapped in a 12 because, or sorry, two sixes I should say, you get your 12 wrapped in two sixes because that way you can carry them in a flat way. Whereas if you have a 12 and it's on that like hanging by the bag like this, all your ranch, which extra, you know me, but all the sauce that you get on there, it's going to come running down gravity wise. All your sauce is going to end up like being pulled by gravity and you're going to get soggy butt bun, soggy bun butt, soggy bun butt. And at the end, and it's like you, you, you try one half and you're like, where's my sauce at? And it's like, it's all in the butt of one bun. And I'm not, I don't, and I don't play these games. It's not for me. I'm very into a, uh, into a two wrap and then I carry them on like a, a level playing field. And so that way, I'm definitely gonna the whole last thing. It's just that it's a level playing field, the sauce doesn't run, and then my life is better. Also, I always bring additional wet flavors, but we know this about me. Okay, let's look at the goods, let's get into a bite. Actually, let's crack into these and then go into a bite. It's a dump. All right, sick, perfect. So I guess the commentary initially is, we always have to look at it. It's the Italian herb and cheese bread. It's my favorite bread. And I'm a veggie connoisseur. I got double meat because you got to. And if you really need to know, what my veggies are, it's lettuce, tomato, pickle, 
red onion, cucumber, banana peppers, and green pepper. That's it. garden vegetable. Mm-mm. You guys. Play around, you won't be around. what's really up easily there's something magical about Subway most people like I think like a lot of people chirp Subway or like it's it's like it's negligible I don't get it I feel like Subway has such a magical like chemically awesome flavor and maybe that's why but it's like the it's just the McDonald's of healthy sandwiches. This is not healthy. This is as bad as for you as McDonald's or anything else. Let's not sit here and pretend that Subway is healthy. It's not. It's a gang of bread with a bunch of processed meats and GMO vegetables and fatty sauces. Like I don't know how they ever. got to the point where they were considered healthy that's the weird part is like I feel like a lot of people's minds are legit corrupted by the idea that subway is healthy it's like nah bruh <laughs> it's just as bad as anything else you go eat a whopper go eat it I fully spelled that go eat a big mac go eat anything else it's the same difference Uh, double meat. Do you want to know the difference? Here's the difference. <laughs> Those other same brainwash reputable companies don't have an ex fat pedophile in jail as their brand representative or ex brand representative. <laughs> That's the difference. And it's weird, like Subway you know inconsequentially didn't plan for that but they fucked up and got a pedophile representative yet still purvey health true this is a meal fit for kings I got a funny little story about getting procuring the subway. And I 
goes like this. I walk into the subway, I get in the line, and in the line, I'm behind like a six foot, like bleach blonde, late 30s, like fit, almost stripper-esque biker woman. And in front of her is her man, and her man is like, have you ever seen um, Sons of Anarchy? The dude Bobby, he's got like the yeah, like the charcoal looking, like sideshow bob, like that hair, like that really frizzy type hair. This dude's probably about clocking in at about five, eight and a half, maybe. You know, his girl's taller than him. I'm taller than him. He's got the summer biker look. And by that I mean he's got um, sh uh, army camo shorts on. And, you know, you know these guys. It's like, this is a subgenre of human. It's a biker guy. He's got the t-shirt, but on his arm he's got the black tribal tat. And he's got, like, the skull rings. And he's just that guy. He's definitely that guy. He... Wants to own a Harley, but he has a Honda Vulcan or whatever, right? Anyway. We're in line. The woman, the girl. Biker chick. Chick ask her subs being dressed, and then da -da -da, and then she gets honey mustard, and then he goes, like, no mayo because like he knows his girl, right? Like, oh, like she's supposed to have mayo because she's like a mayo fiend or whatever. And she's like, no, 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 don't need any extra mayo. And I just, me being me, as like chef boy or me, because I can look at the honey mustard at Subway and know just by the consistency of it that it's a mayo-based honey mustard. There's two types of honey mustard. There's mayo-based and non-mayo-based. Based. And from this channel, and from my just my general background of cooking, you know, and chefing some things up, I'm qualified to speak on honey mustard mayo. Sorry, mayo based honey mushroom. So I can't hold my tongue and I just say out of like food passion, I'm like, I'm like, no extra mayo required. That honey mustard is, is a mayo based honey mustard. And she turns to me and she's like, she's like agree. She's like, yeah, 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 it is. Don't need it. And then and then all of a sudden he this this like biker like kind of smaller like he like looks over and he's like oh yeah is that right and then at that point like and here's a shout out to any dudes with their woman like if you want to remain in an alpha state you don't react to somebody actually just saying something out of like a like, I wasn't hitting on anybody's girl or nothing. It just... But he took it that way. So he went into, like, protective, like, alpha... alpha I call that beta. Beta boy. If he if he really felt secure in himself, he wouldn't give a shit. He'd, like, engage and be like, Oh, really? Like, is that what what that mustard's made out of? Ha, 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 ha. Like, he would have joked. But he went into defense mode and was like... Like, in his brain, he's like, Oh, this guy's trying to, like, get my girl. So... He started like, like eyeing me down and like, like kind of posturing and like had like an attitude, and then he moved over in front of his girl and like took her space because she was closest to me. But he like was so insecure that he shuffled over 
think I'm trying to pick up his girl. I'm like, all I'm talking about is honey mustard, dude. Like, no worries. But he's like, is that right? Shoveled her over. And then here's the funniest shit. It's my favorite move. And fellas, I gotta tell you, if you have anger issues or you're insecure and you're quick to jump up and protect your woman like that when she's not even being threatened or at all this is the funniest shit and if you find it happening to yourself then I'm sorry to tell you but you're a beta boy As you're insecure, as soon as your woman can sense that you're getting heated and in protective mode, because women don't want confrontation. Women are like, women already know that I wasn't even on the level of like trying to pick her up. I was just talking about honey mustard, mayo based honey mustard. She agreed. When you're insecure as a man and you start getting aggro and shit, this is the, this is the telltale and this is how you know you, you, you fucked up. And how you look weak in front of your woman. As soon as she can tell, your, tell your blood is starting to boil. And you're trying to be confrontational boy. And this is what she started doing. She started rubbing his back. She started rubbing his back. Like trying to calm her man down. Because she knew. Because in that, in that case, she's the alpha. She's smarter than you at that point. Socially... And emotionally, you're a woman. It's smarter than you, and it's hilarious. I just saw her start rubbing his back, and I can tell his sub was up next to take the order to, for him to get his toppings, and I could tell that he was so preoccupied in his mind with how much he didn't like what I said that. As he was getting his back massaged by his woman, who was trying to calm him down, he couldn't even focus between him and the guy on his sub. Like he was like stuttering his words and like, st like it was like he was like, it was like, oh, what ingredients do you want? And he was like stuttering and stopping and stammering and like being like, because he was so invested in the fact that he was like pissed that I would say anything about his girl's honey mustard. It's like the whole time I was just coming from a booty perspective. And it's like in my head I'm like I ain't even trying to be at your girl dude like that's your woman all good she ain't even my flavor at all not my vibe I'm just I was on some passionate honey mustard I love honey mustard it's my favorite dressing outside of ranch honey mustard like honey mustard ranch those are my two favorites so It was just mad funny. Because I've experienced that so many times with dudes. Like, the most secure man, it's always a clutch, by the way, that you can be with your woman. If a dude says something like that, just turn and be like, like, you know, you have her. Like, you, like, she's there with you, right? If somebody chirps up from behind and says something about honey mustard, you literally just engage in the idea of like, like his like his girl did. She was like, "Yeah, that's right. It is a mayo based honey mustard." He's he's like, he was like, you just be like, "Really? I didn't know that about honey mustard." Because in that in that sense, it's like you're owning the fact that it's like my girl's with me. She ain't worried about you. Even if in your head you're like, "Oh, this guy's trying to like 
instigate some pickup on my girl. It's like, no. And even if he was trying to, through Honey Mustard, you say, oh, really? I didn't know Honey Mustard. And then it starts like a dialogue, and then it's like a weird friendship. And then from there, you might be able to, to tell if the banter is this person trying to make an advance on your girl or not. And then to end the shit on some really funny story note kind of thing on like within the same dude a block and a half later he went out to my sub I walk down I go to wait for the streetcar I see the same man but now he's alone outside of this Rexall which is like a shopper's drug mart or like a, a, a drug like a, like a like a local drugstore He's literally outside. His his girl's nowhere to be found. It's him alone. But now he's perched on a windowsill, peering through the window, watching her shop. And the whole time, I know for a fact he paid, he paid for the subway. And my guess is that he gave her the card or the money. And she was like, I gotta go in and buy snacks or da 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 so my man is perched on the windowsill keeping tabs watching his girl in the Rexall buying whatever she needs to do probably some eyeshadow and whatever cause women is women is women would be a little, a little sneaky like that like it's like oh I gotta go but then they might get a little mascara or whatever too That was the ultimate confirmation moment when I was watching him watch his girl from outside shop with his with his credit card. I know I have a mostly male audience. That's called being subdued, insecure, and a beta boy. Don't do it. Don't be it. It's a bad look. You're born in this world as a man. Be a man. Don't be an asshole. Don't be a dick. Be a man. Be confident. Be secure. Know in yourself that you own the fact that your woman is there for you. That she's with you. Don't be intimidated by another man. If there's a girl choosing to spend time with you, it's because she has chosen to spend time with you. So therefore, you cannot publicly portray the energy of second-guessing yourself. And you just look weak, and that's that's not a masculine quality. And women don't want that. Women need you to own yourself. They don't want you to own them, though. They want to own yourself so that they can feel secure in knowing that you will lead and guide them and take charge properly but not be commanding or controlling or abusive or anything like that. Just masculine energy. Owning your energy as a man, leading, guiding,
Can't figure out a next word, but you know what I mean. Women do not want to be owned or controlled. They want to be... Com they want to know that within you, they can have confidence in your confidence and your providership and your... Your lead, you're 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 leading them, and you're comforting, and you're providing, and you're problem solving, and things like that. And women have those traits as well. It's just that by nature, men are the ones who are supposed to take that role. Anyways, once again, way too deep for a double meat. <laughs> Subway sandwich, but at the same time, I love sharing my flow state with you and my wisdoms in relativity to my experiences and the funny experiences that happened to me and the elaborate the elaboration of such. So, till the next one, you guys know what to do. You gotta eat good, live well, stay true. What up, world? Back with another one, keeping it chill, maybe like a hybrid mukbang ASMR. I'm quite tired, if I'm honest, pretty late at night, but I'm very excited for a nice meatball sub with some extra Hidden Valley. You know I need it. Got some creamy gills. Baked, though. The, the snap, the texture of a baked chip. Too good. Uh, additionally, we're going to have a uh, glass of ice here, well, a cup of ice, and a fresh Diet Mountain Dew ski. So yeah, I got a fresh Mountain Dewski. Sorry, I was just semi interrupted by. You're gonna hear people bopping around right now. I'm in a living space where there's people, so that's just gonna have to happen. Uh, yeah. We get a fresh fizz. A little taste of heaven. Got the ranch, of course. Now, as you'll observe here, these chips, it's the baked chips. They're just. So I'm gonna put the snap on them. They're just a bit like thicker than your average regular chip. So I got her loaded up, all the fixings. She's a meatball. There you go. So. Meatball, limited marinara, I don't like too much. Try to keep it as dry as possible. Iceberg, spinach, tomato, onion, cucumber, green pepper, banana peppers. We're doing it. Now, we're actually just gonna take it to another little bit of a higher level. Because today, I went, uh, I was in the grocery store. I didn't really go grocery shopping, I just went for a few other things and I got, a sack of pepperoni because <laughs> I, lo I love snacking on this type of pepperoni it's so good i feel very trailer park boys but i feel like if we're having a meatball sub let's just add some it's one for me another interesting thing is the jalapeno cheddar breader I've never seen it. Let's just get into it. The nice quiet pack of rags I brought for for face wiping. Really a, a clutch pro move. So I went out to Subway with the intention of uh, like a Philly cheese. And somewhere along the way I just I thought to myself, nah, I'll take a meatball.
mainly because I wasn't really trying to spend 14 bucks on like a Philly cheese sub. When I could get this loaded sucker for, I think it was like 7 58 bucks. That's definitely one thing about a meatball sub though, you gotta be pre prepared for a mess. Cause they get overloaded quick. And slip and slide around. I feel like red onions on a meatball sub are like so necessary. As you'll hear people doing things. Mm. Diet Mountain Dew. It's just so rare that I have Mountain Dew. But when I do, do the do, it's wonderful. Falling apart. Maybe that makes the better video though, when it's a bit sloppy. I feel like people like that. So I got like a decent little backdrop. I got my desk set up today. Ordered it from Ikea a couple days ago. Came through pretty quick actually, pretty stoked. And then I got like I screwed like this backboard onto it. I got my lights set up, getting speakers in the next pit, some stuff to start making some more music. Things are all good. Been working with my buddy. He owns his own uh, like little like single man. Now, now dual man, I guess. Um, like construction type company, but just like finishing base, like not finishing, like renovating um, apartments, condos, <clears throat> building decks, installing windows, doing siding, all that type of work, finishing work, carpentry work. But it's like my best boy from elementary school, so it's like we just cruise around. We do hard work, but... It's like... I don't have like... You know... Annoying boss or anything, right? It's just my, my buddy. And we are, uh, we're all good vibes. It's flexible too. It's like we can kind of choose when we want to start and finish per day, per the job.
but it is good to put in like a, like a longer day just to like make sure you're just getting progress done. But yeah, mainly just trying to like readjust and figure out the vibe of like slow town living, like. Very different. Really not used to it. a good one year game plan that's going to buy me more freedom in the future so it's all gonna be good and worth it still a young dude don't have to stay here forever but I can get myself into a position where I own something. And then eventually make it a, uh, like a rental property. I can travel, move, whatever. Go live other places, do YouTube still, but have something that I own that is just paying for itself and bringing me profit. And also working for my friend. I'm learning everything you need to know to to do, uh, you know, fixer uppers, rentals and stuff on your, on your own. Exactly the case. 
I was banging. For the next one. Eat good, live well. Stay true. You know how grandpas get that shiny gym, that that grandpa whistle. He he doesn't sound he doesn't sound southern at all, but he has the whistle. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Yes, hello and welcome to a new installment of Natural Light Vibes in the Upstairs Realm, graced by the legends of rock behind us. We also are blessed with Subway today. Super jazzed about, got some dips and some chips, and then a dog off to the side that is going to be begging very soon. But uh, until then, we must do one thing more, and that is pour. Got the doctor pee today. So we will pour this up, and then I will unravel the mystery and get everything set up for you guys and myself. And we're going to enjoy it in this natural light. I love natural light videos. I just... I love how the food looks in them. It's just amazing. There's nothing better than a natural light video. If I had it my way, I would definitely have my full time set up like in front of a window. Maybe one day in the future. There she is. Full beautiful pour. Ever delicious. Okay, let's get this beast out. You guys already know <clears throat> what I'm working with. It's the Italian BMT, of course. Has to be. It's the only way. And uh, I got it double meated. So she's looking crazy. Whoa, Nelly. Yes, 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 yes. Looking so good. I gotta get some of these chips out. So most of these chips are bottom feeders. I I bought them the other night, I couldn't resist, I tapped into them and now I'm left with kind of the sketchy ones, but it is what it is. So recently a subscriber commented that I was due in for an Italian BMT Subway mukbang and I couldn't agree more, that was a very accurate statement. I've been fantasizing about eating this right here for about, I would say two weeks now and I'm ready to fulfill this fantasy. Mm -mm. It's way too good. So ham, salami, pepperoni, doubled up. And then my toppings as per usual, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, green pepper, red onion, banana peppers, ranch, chipotle, and this time I got sweet onion sauce. I usually get house sauce, but I thought I'd switch up with sweet onion today. And let me tell you, it's the better choice. <clears throat> I will be doing that from now on. Also, my sister made this dip. It's just like a very creamy bacon, cheese, and green onions. I think it's cream, sour cream and cream cheese. And it's stupid good but I am going to put some on here just to see Look how fresh, you know what I mean? Mm. I did forget to make mention of the bun, herb and cheese.
Italian herb and cheese. The only bread I get at Subway, pretty much. Sometimes if I get a tuna sub, I will get a it on brown. There's of course cheese on here as well. I know somebody's probably tri tripping, being like, "No cheese." There's cheese into the middle, into the guts. You guys ever do this? Start eating it like typewriter style. Down this way. It's legit such a sub hack. It makes it so much easier. I promise you. Oh, I promise you. This is a hoodie home blend. <clears throat> Our ranch, hot sauce, and barbecue. too good. What a meal. I swear, man. When Subway hits, It's like Mike Tyson. This is Tyson status. It is doing the most. So because I was uh, anticipating doing this video today, last night in bed, I was, of course, hitting some fantasy meal videos, getting me prepped for today. So I <clears throat> typed in the old YouTube, I typed in uh, Subway ASMR eating or whatever, and I found this dude, this, this new guy, I have never seen him before. Not Morpheus, but ASMR Grandpa. And he's a 68 year old dude named Trip. Trip, sick name. What a trip to see a grandpa eating Subway. So I watched it. I gotta tell you, this is my grandpa. He has a natural <clears throat> knack for like his ASMR voice. It's the way that he speaks. You know how grandpa's Get that shiny gym, that that grandpa whistle. <laughs> he he doesn't sound he doesn't sound southern at all, but he has the whistle. I 
and he's pretty soft spoken. I wasn't expecting like to actually get relaxed, but he had me kind of relaxed and then craving the sub, of course. Although his was turkey. That didn't stop me from going on a further rabbit hole of way more subway videos though. I wanted to make mention of another YouTuber that I watch religiously. So I feel like in the past, in like Q&As and stuff, this is so good. You guys have asked me like, you know, what YouTubers do you watch? And like I said in the past, I'm pretty random on YouTube. Very ADD. But there are a few people that I do religiously watch. And there's this one dude, his channel. I don't even understand what it is really. It's more, it's mostly comedy, but it's comedy based around food and health. And like, he, he used to do veganism and then he tried carnivore and then he's, he's tried all these different diets. And anyways, his name is Vegetable Police. And he actually is from Toronto. And some way, somehow, this dude just to me has like, his videos are essentially about nothing a lot of the time, like completely nothing. Like such a ridiculous concept of video. Yeah, somehow, he keeps my attention throughout almost every video. He, he's just got a natural comedic element to him. And just like some of his, his editing and his music choice. Just suit the video so well. He's probably my favorite YouTuber. His name, his real name is Casey Stern. He's also 38 and looks like he's 25. Chuck him out. I'd be intrigued to know if any of you who watch this have watched this channel. He's such a goof. But he hates mukbangs. <laughs> Rightfully so, he eats like a bird. He's always on the search for optimal health, but it's like he can never find, he's always got some nitpick with his health. I think he's just a hypochondriac, really. Well, what can I say? The sandwich was too good. And I don't even have time for these chips. 
Hope you enjoy the natural light sub crush and my random talking. Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true. I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Hey yo, what up world? What's good with y'all? Back with another one. I mean, I get cravings. I do get subway cravings, and today's just one of those days. I had to go down. So I got a nice treat wrapped up in this sheet uh, with an S on its chest. Not for Superman, for Subway, okay? But sometimes Subway makes me feel like a Superman. Uh, we also got some extra crunchy chips on deck. I splurged, I got two bags, salt and vinnies, and then I saw these honey Dijons and I just, I had to do it to myself, okay? Uh, I'm gonna unravel a mystery. That's a song lyric of some sort from somewhere. I'll see you there. I'm building a mystery. I think that's what it was. So, that's the old perfect unravel flex. And that did come out perfectly unraveled. She gets saucy. All right, now to crack a pack. Salt and Vinny's on deck. Honey Dijon, double on deck. So I am starving. I have not eaten today. I'm very turbo excited about this. Uh, I went with the intention of getting a ch chicken teriyaki and uh, at Subway, I noticed there was this other chicken that looked way more real because let's be honest, that chicken teriyaki chicken, that was like strips, sometimes get a little, little dicey, you know what I mean? So uh, there was this like more like actual pulled breast looking chicken that they're using for this like smoky bacon thing that I wasn't feeling. So I got them to do that chicken with cheese, lettuce, tomato, pickle, onion, cucumber, green pepper, banana peppers, my all-time favorite, just quintessential. I always get these toppings pretty much, except for certain subs call for taking some out and adding some other things. But uh, for the most part, that's what I really always get. Chipotle uh, Southwest ranch and sweet onion dressing, and then herb and cheese bread toasted. Before we do anything more, we must pour. And today I don't have the original cup because they're all in the dishwasher. And we do need to keep our cups clean around here. So we have this Masonic jar, Illuminati Mason, free masonry jar. Back with the doctor, Diet Dr. P. Very funny on my videos lately. I, sorry, not sorry, because Doc P is like the most legitimate soda on the face of the planet. So like, I'm happy that I've gotten people like, mildly addicted to it but i've been getting a lot of comments from people being like you've turned me into a dr p fiend you've turned me into a, a, a dr p hound like i'm always craving the doctor now because of you it's your fucking fault and i'm you know on one hand i'm like okay i'm sorry but like on the other hand i'm like fountain of youth i'm like you know we're out here, Bellagio styles. It's the best pop on the planet. <laughs> so we must. Have our inaugural tasting. For anybody who's wondering, I did that face as a joke a bunch of videos ago and it's just like that like snooty like fine wine connoisseur like when rich people are like at wine tastings that's what the whole joke is I like the joke okay so here we go sub's looking pretty good we'll have to have an interior interior examination at some point that sounds very Kind of disgusting, but uh, I'm a sub doctor and I need to see what's going on inside of this thing. You know what I mean?
I love it when it's extra saucy. Inside, we're looking pretty good, although I will say this. Not seeing a whole lot of chicken yet. a chip mashup of course that's like eating crotch drops things that drop out near your garage but I'm a uh, see what I mean about this cat okay. actually just want to show you guys this chicken this is this is rare at Subway. It's real. Like look at that. That is real chicken. Which is a rare, rare find. So I told that guy behind the counter, I was like, yeah man. Let's definitely go with that chicken. These honey Dijons. That's a top chip in my world. It's a nice little uh, orange tint to it. Very, very good. You know that chip is doing the most and speaking its mind to me when salt and vinegars are my favorite. And those are running a show right now. The sub is so good right now. The old stretchy bite eyes. Mm. So good. I just got a huge creamy cheesy bite pocket. I feel like that's definitely one thing with Subway is there's so much going on. Vegetable sauce wise. at least in my sub-constructions, that the cheese quite literally just gets lost in the sauce. And they use like, those little thin triangles, I just feel like it's not very substantial. So at this juncture in the meal, I'm actually disappointed in myself that I didn't bring more sauce. So please bear with me for a brief cut, literally a two second 
0.1 second cut to from these messages from Hidden Valley Ranch. Welcome back to Hidden Valley Ranch and our sponsor for today's video. Kidding, I wish, but I do got the mega bottle and I'm gonna go full throttle on said bottle. I also got a hell of a good, I found that in the fridge. The name of it really does say, say it all. It is hell of a good. To me, it's the best dip out there that I've found. In recent years. Wow. Tell me why that's working so good with these honey Dijons. I don't know. But it is. Okay, so some of you might know, a lot of you might may know, and actually some of you have seen me there, but um, I've worked for the Blue Jays slinging beers for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, I feel like over the years, I have some some BJ tails, Blue Jay tails. I have other BJ tails too, but different kind. Um, and I want to actually tell you one today. So let's get surgical on the second half because I feel as if it's disrespectful, not at some point during your sub experience, to at least potato chip six inches out of the 12, you know? I was doing those potato chip bites here and there, but I do think if you really want to respect the sandwich, love the sandwich, be the sandwich, become the sandwich, there's really only one place to take it, and that is into the crunchy chip realm of love and appreciation, not death, love and appreciation. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to love and appreciate this crunchy ass sando. And for further love and appreciation, we're going to be a psycho ranch human and do it just like that. Okay. Oh yeah. That's a bite. that is how it's really really done how it's really supposed to be I believe so I'll just share with you a quick story about working at the Blue Jays games. I have many. But we're on the back half of the situation here, so. Basically, um, I've clearly been obsessed with food and YouTubing and things to do with food and YouTubing for a good long while. And so... Before I even started YouTube, I used to watch a lot of food YouTube stuff. One of whom, food YouTuber, was Furious Pete. And he's like, you know, I guess relatively famous in the YouTube space. Like, quite famous. And he's very, like, intense, ex exciting, outgoing. I'm sure a lot of you guys know who he is. And so one day, I was in the aisle going about my day slinging these beers for way overpriced money highway robbery money but that's the house they make that money 
I just mean tips. And uh, in the aisle, there's like the aisle seat, right? So it's, it's a busy day. And uh, I was selling to somebody like right here and then some from behind me at a point, I feel like a tug or a tap or whatever. Cause that happens constantly in the ballpark. People are savages when humans want beer. They don't care that you're selling to somebody else. They are like on your shit. You get yelled at, tugged at, pulled in directions. It's wild. I'm cool with it though. That's the nature of the ballpark. It's a wild, crazy place. Don't go to a baseball game like being a little bitch about it. It's like, be ready. To go into like madness on some days when they're winning when the game's important the energy's high you're gonna get spilled on trampled over yelled at Heckled all the shit. So, anyways, I get tugged on my shirt. I turn around. It's Furious Pete. He needs beers. So, I'm a fan of dude at the time. I'm like, whoa, crazy. Um, this is like in his peak success too. This is when he was like probably doing his best, really on top of his YouTube game. And uh, he's with a couple of his boys and his and his girl. No. And so I didn't really fanboy out. Because I don't act like that. When I see like famous people, but I was a little bit like, oh, yo, no way, Furious Pete. Like, yo, what's up, man? Like, I watch your channel and shit. And dude was. not friendly not engaging not appreciative not not like a not like a oh thanks like didn't really engage or talk to me at all it's basically brushed me off and tip like shit I was bummed. I was just like, damn. That did not go how I, as I would have expected to. You're not the same guy in real life as you are in front of the camera. And you're pretty wealthy, I think, too, because he was doing well on YouTube. In a time when YouTube was, like, plentiful. This was pre-adpocalypse. -ad So, that was a bummer to me. 
And basically, I guess I'll say two things. I kind of get where you where he was at in his head a bit because sometimes it's di- like you're just not expecting someone to like no- recognize you, and when it throws you off, you just you don't really know how to react. So on one hand, I was like, I was like mildly understanding, but at that point, he was like YouTube famous enough that his the frequency and occurrence of that happening to him was probably pretty high whereas in my experience it's like you know I had like you know 35,000 subscribers 40,000 subscribers and every once in a while I would get recognized and I would try my best to be like very you know, engaging and 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 say what say what's up and say thank you, but there's there has been times where it's just like whoa, like you just not expecting it, and it's just you kind of stumble on your words. But he was more than stumble on his words; he was just like outright, seemingly like kind of a dick, and just seemed very unappreciative. So. That's just a light little ballpark tale. I have many, but yeah, I just want to mention that that because I remembered it the other day that that I met like a YouTuber that I kind of like w- was down with, and then they just completely shattered the image I had of them because they're so different for the camera, which is uh. Why I try to be exactly who the fuck I am on on camera and not like all put on and extra and fake and loud and shit. Because like if you do reach a bunch of success and then in the future you you meet a lot of people who watch you, it's just like I don't it doesn't seem sustainable for your life to like be putting on airs all the time. Because then when you do meet your fans, people are going to be like, what the fuck? Who is this guy? So. That's why I've always tried to maintain like my realness too, because I feel like if this was ever to translate into real life, it's just this is who I am. Do you know what I mean? So it wouldn't be hard for me to maintain my 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 personality position in real life, because it's just like what you see is what you get. Anyways, <laughs> that was fucking so banging once again like i just i always hear subway catching mad flack and every time i eat it i'm just like i really liked it like i really enjoyed it okay hope you did too till the next one eat good live well stay true Hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Hey, yo, what up, world? What's good with y'all? Hope you're doing okay. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today on deck, we have a classic. We have Subway. I was jonesing it. I've been jonesing it for literally two weeks now or so, and I just I had to get it. I had to cave in. Uh, got some ripple chips up here some other things off to the side we'll get to them i'm gonna unwrap this get everything in place and then we do what we do here we chat we talk we eat we hear stories we vibe straight up this thing's looking a little too hot for tv whoever the subway worker was straight up right now thank you so much shout out you you straight up killed this presentation wise unreal when the worker comes in clutch with a nice assembly that's like so so thank you all right so as per usual i got some homies on the side here a nice that the big boy hell of a good french onion dip that's for the chips 
If you ain't never had that, it's so good. Obviously the Hidden Valley, just in case we need some extra ranch. And I figured I'd dabble with a few dri drips of uh, Franks on the sub today. Something I don't usually do. It's not uh, not standard issue for me, but uh, I'm down for it today. And then of course, we must with a diet doctor. Life ain't shit without a diet doctor. I need a doctor to come save me. And this is the one I choose. Always into the fountain. As we must. Hmm, like a fine Pinot Noir. Okie dokie, smoky. We goes in. So this, ladies and gents, is the best sub in my opinion at Subway. It's my favorite. The Italian BMT. We bite it, and then I'll uh, I'll educate you about it if you never had one. Because you know what, a lot of people stay in their own little boxes, and I want you to try something new if you never had it. So here we go. So perfect. You guys know, first off, that Subway has that, that bread is basically uh, heroin. Like when you smell it from outside, when you go buy a Subway and you, you smell the bread, it's an instant hook. You know it is. So right on point, I got the Italian herb and cheese for the bread. So the bread obviously is hitting just because that Subway bread hits. Got to go extra saucy. I got double meat. I feel like at this point in my life, as an adult man, going to Subway, it's just a requirement to get double meat. I really don't think I could do it any other way. Once you experience the double meat at Subway, there's really no going back. To if, if I'm being honest. Because you come to the realization that previously you were basically getting a salad in a bun with like a meat sprinkle. And when you do it like this, it's like you're actually just getting a normal sub. Which I know. It sounds like a total ripoff. And you know what? It might be. That said, though, Subway's just got that. I 
it's got that corporate hook on me. It's got that flavor that I just you can't get anywhere else. So we spend the extra. Three dollars for the meat. And get ourselves a proper sandwich. The meats are salami, pepperoni. And ham. I wonder how this is. Mm. The French onion dip bite works. For toppings, I got lettuce, tomato, cucumber, onion, pickle, green pepper, banana peppers, as you can see. Mm. And if you don't get the banana peppers, you're crazy. that like pickled spicy cut crucial mm-hmm. that calls for a uh, calls for a doctor to cleanse the palette. It's picturesque. It's so picturesque. Whoever made this is legit a sandwich artist. Like, this person definitely went to Sandwich University. Because I don't know the last time I've seen a sub looking that perfect. That looks as advertised. Which is next to impossible or rare to get. Well, I should enlighten you as to the sauces that I got. My go-tos, obviously ranch, uh, Chipotle Southwest, and the house sauce, which is like an oil vinegar sauce. And sometimes you just gotta take it to the level of Dip in the chips and the French onion and just stack them on. You know that's the move. Mm. This thing's killing it right now. Just standing at attention. Do you guys ever do this weird move where you actually eat the sub like 
down this way instead of like this way. It's actually a clutch move. Perfect. Sauce control. It's like a burger. It's low key a secret technique that I always forget about. I see you opening up for me. What do you want? A couple scraps? I got you. Just naturally opening up. Needing some crunch. I got you. If you're not, if you haven't at this point in this video, either been on your like Uber Eats or skip the dishes. Creating a fantasy sub thinking like, mm, I shouldn't really do it, but now that I've seen this video, I have to. Or you're not at least heavily considering going in your car and slip in your slippers to the nearest subway then you're a champion because I can tell you that just for me doing this video right now if I was watching this video I would be like out the door for a sub At the very minimum, I would know that tomorrow at lunch at work, I'm going to Subway. I bit my feet. Oh my god, so painful. that biting my lip tongue cheek just uh so annoying it actually hurts so much but these are the uh consequences i guess of gluttony This is we pay. That was bombastic, Mr. Fantastic. Perfect. Just perfect. Go get yourself some subway though, for real. Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well, stay true. Yeah, that's right. Your guy's back with another uh, subway slapper today. And it has the, oh, that subway smell that ropes you in. When you walk outside subway and you, you Pepe Le Pew that shit, it's game on from there. Once it's in here, 
it's pretty hard to stay away from Subway's aromatics. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Yes, hello, you are seeing this correctly. Your guy is coming at you with another Subway slapper today. So I gotta pop into this, get it ready for the consumption because my hunger levels are very not chill right now. They are high, high levels. So we unravel a mystery and just enjoy our lives. You, me, and everybody else. Okay. Whoa. They were double wrapping the meat. That's called double bagging it. Sometimes a requirement in these streets. As you can see, once again, my local subway is doing it way too properly. I know we're coming hot off the heels of a double meat Italian BMT. Uh, when I was ordering that one that day, I also saw this cheesy chicken, rotisserie chicken, bacon, kind of ranchy Southwest vibe. And it's been playing on my mind since that video. So had to do it to him. And then I also got the Lay's original baked chips. My voice is extra radio today. Depth for whatever reason, and I'm in a fairly chill mood, so we're just gonna keep it easy on this one, enjoy some food, have some chats, but before we do anything more, we must pour. And today we've elected to go with the Diet Pepsi, in the combo, of course. Freshly fizzing, very, very fresh. The other day I opened a bottle of Perrier soda water and legit, it was the most disappointing thing ever. I swear it was just like, it barely even gave me a pssst. Like it was just flat. Actually I bought two bottles at the same time and they both did that. I was like, that's just so frustrating when you get like, especially flat soda water. Ugh, nasty. So it's the urban cheese bread. Herb and cheese. I actually saw somebody write in the comments what once urban cheese, like U-R-B-A-N, like urban, <laughs> you know, urban music. Um, the rotisserie chicken, bacon cheese, toasted lettuce, tomato, cucumbers, green pepper, onion, and banana peppers. And we're actually going to obviously have to put chips in it. Like I said, these are the baked lays. But a sub is always better. With a little extra crunch and a little extra ranch. Close up. And of course we go. That is so exactly what I needed right now. It's blissful. That chicken is actually good quality. I can get the bacon. I can get the cheese. That sweet onion sauce. Ever since that last video with the sweet onion sauce has just been... I've 
I've been thinking about it. It's very, very good. Hitting so hard right now. I've had the hugest crave for Popeyes lately. And it's painstakingly sad. Living in a city that doesn't have Popeyes anymore. Not that it ever did, but I used to live in a city that had Popeyes. And I've been craving everything. Mashed potatoes, biscuits, and honey. The fried chicken. The chicken tenders. Coleslaw. Don't even get me started on the coleslaw. One of my subscribers recently put me onto this channel called Destin Choice. Like, that's his name, Destin Choice, Destin Choice TV. He has two channels, but. He's mainly like a social commentary channel. Like, he covers like a lot of drama stuff. But in like the best way possible. Like this, I've just been binging him. He's hilarious. Like he's got no time for the bullshit. He like so intelligently and eloquently like just shreds people to bits, but like in a way where it's like not polarizingly offensive. It's just like he's covering ridiculous humans that it's just like he's just spitting pure game like it's just everything he's saying is facts he holds his tongue on nothing like he just blurts his opinion and he doesn't give a fuck if you like it or not. He's just like a whole confident, just mood. But the way he talks about like, YouTubers in specific, like, how trash and fake like so many people are but he just does it in such a like funny way in a way that you like just have to agree with His intro kills me too because he like his intro like mocks cringy intros. He does this thing where he like rolls his eyes back and he said he's like, "Hello, all my beautiful babies." <laughs> it's good watching. He's black, he covers 
kind of a lot of black like culture stuff but he's always talking about like all races too he shits on white people a lot he does shit on white people quite a bit but once again like I just don't mind because what he says is like he often just usually like a factual thing like it's true <laughs> There's stereotypes in all races. And usually they ring pretty true pretty true. I mean that's how it becomes a stereotype. Cause they're usually pretty accurate. That rotisserie style chicken, man. A good sub. Definitely right there with the BMT for me. Definitely like a good alternative option to go to when you're kind of tired of your same sub. Highly recommend. A chill, low energy one today, but it's just how I'm feeling. Hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. You know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true. It's Black Beanie. I'm back talking about cleaning. Look at these views from tidying rooms. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Hey yo, what up world? What is truly good with y'all? Back with a Subway Slapper today featuring the most Canadian chips ever. Ketchup Lays. With the power of editing, let's just not deal with the bullshit and get to the food. Someone in my comments recently was talking about how they like were crushing all my Subway vids and they needed another one. Well, this one is, I guess, specifically for you, but also I needed another one because I love me a Subway video. So I got 12 inches of the rotisserie chicken, bacon, many veg, couple sauce, a meatball for dessert. And uh, that's really it. I just want to get into the video. We're going to have a little chat about something on my mind. Uh, also, coldest water, if you'd like to save 10 percentile. Uh, on your order with the coldest water if you need a bottle um, down below code hoodie and you use it in the checkout also shout out to those who have been purchasing once again you're the light of my life okay so very much appreciate you now let's appreciate food and just get to the getting also pure amateur move pre-poured without you so sorry but here's cheers to the pour up i'll promise that i'll get it in next video i just kind of fucked it up my bad. Delightful. Also, just realized another thing we have to do is blow this hoe out. This uh, blueberry waffle cream candle. That's right. I do. I burn candles. I burn blueberry waffle cream candles. Might seem a little not manly, but I love delicious scents. Okay. This is the sub that I've been craving this whole last time is this oven roasted chicken 
with uh, bacon cheese, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, green pepper, all the fixings, pickles. But mainly, I was craving the that sweet onion dressing, man. Subway sweet onion sauce, stupid. With a little bit of Chipotle Southwest, even dumber. But let's get it. Toasted, of course. I feel like with every sandwich at Subway, toasted is a requirement for me. Mm hmm. A deeper look. Ketchup chip. One of my favorite chips of all time. In my top three for sure. Specifically by Lay's. Snap the texture. And it's got this super chemically like fake sugar sweetness to it. That I can't even explain. What I do know is it's delicious. But man. I was so looking forward to this video. And it's my reward for cleaning. You might be like, what do you mean reward for cleaning? And that's what I mean. In life, at least in, in the little last bit in quarantine, I've just been like letting myself spiral for a few days. And then I just get my whole space back to fresh. Because mentally for me, having a nice clean everything in its place, you know, not dirty, nothing like that, fresh laundry, fresh bed, fresh everything, just translates so well mentally for me, I just feel like I can operate so much better in life, in every aspect of my life, I feel like for me, cluttered space, cluttered mind when I have a cluttered mind I feel stressed out it's not good but I feel like it's a good character trait to like learn and integrate into your life because it translates to everything work business relationships I know I said that the meatball was going to be for dessert, but I legit couldn't hold back. But yeah, I have this system in my life where 
when everything needs to be dealt with, all the cleaning, organizing, things like that. I like make it so that when I start the project, it could take me six hours sometimes to do everything. I say, basically, man, I just have to show you because it looks so good in there. Basically like, oh, you're not allowed to have anything pleasurable today, like watch anything, eat anything, do anything like that until you're like done your tasks. Because for me, I just love having a mission, having the task and completing it. And being like mentally satisfied with everything being done and then getting to indulge. And that's what I mean. Indulge in that right there. A meatball, this cheese, this marinara, these veg. Unreal. I know it's easy to get distracted. I feel like I know so many people who throw on like a load of laundry and then either they finish it to the point of like folding and then it just lays on the bed and they don't fold it or they, they just like sleep in their laundry for a day or two and then they get around to finishing it. Or throw it in the wash, forget about it, leave it because you get distracted watching like me on YouTube, maybe. Go the next day. Oh, yeah. And then your laundry stinks. And you got to rewash it. Waste money and time. But yeah, for me, cleaning in that is honestly like therapeutic. It's like zen for me. I just throw on a podcast, maybe some good music. And I love watching my space go from like not ideal and annoying to like a whole ass place of worship. You know what I mean? And then I light candles and I vibe right out. I make the lights low, I love dim lights, I love cozy, and then just like, then I get to have my food, I get to watch my stuff that I wanna watch. I'm mostly a YouTube consumer. For me, YouTube is 100% the new TV for me, like, I just love the random chaotic nature of YouTube where if this thing is disinteresting to me, I just click to something else. I wasn't always like this though. I never used to be that on point until sometime in high school, my best friend, he was really clean, neat and tidy. And he told me one day about how like, you know, what he's gonna do and like all day today. And like, I'm like, you do that? And he's like, yeah, man. So it's all about being fresh. Subway, eat fresh. <clears throat> but he's like, yeah, it's all about being fresh. It's all about being on point. And I was like, all right. 
Let me see. So I started dedicating my Sundays back when I smoked weed. I'd smoke a little weed, throw on this Swollen Members album, actually. Shout out Swollen Members. And then I'd clean. And from then on, I just got addicted to it. I got addicted to the ritual of caring, caring for my things. I try to see my things as like valuable tools that I paid money for that like bring me call it comfort, satisfaction, joy, actual use. That's another whole video I want to do talking about essentialism and how everything in my life that I have around me serves a purpose, serves a function. Like, isn't a waste of space. No junk. I hate junk. Clutter and junk stress me out so much. It's like, while I appreciate a good birthday card or a nice Christmas card, that shit's going in the trash the second I read it. just what it is I just can't hold on to like the sentimental piece of paper so I, I'm never going to read it again I know you love me I love you too and we'll just leave it at that I don't need the card <laughs> in all honesty just you transfer me some money and text me hey Happy Christmas, I love ya. Better for the planet, too. Also, who says Happy Christmas? Clearly, it's a Merry Christmas. But yeah, I heavily uh, challenge you, or heavily consider you considering challenging yourself to be more thoughtful about your space, what's in your space, how that's affecting you, actually, like, because it does, it does f fuck with your, like, for, Lee, for me, it does, at least. And, like, Try to eliminate things that you really don't need. And try to challenge yourself to maintain like a certain level of keptness in your space as like a daily routine, as a, because it really is like a good character trait because it, it transfers to everything. To be able to maintain and upkeep and appreciate <clears throat> like tools, it's a, good, it's a good practice. So anyways, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed that one. Until the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true. <laughs> Peace. Yo, yo, what is truly up and good with y'all? As you can see, it's a yard vibe, so welcome back to the yard. We're outside. We've gone ahead and got ourselves a little cheat meal today. Um, I'm gonna just say, I deserve it. You know, I've lost some weight and I went walking and stuff. And now I wanna have myself a little cheat. So, Subway, two different subs. This is all Luke B. Grubbin's fault, by the way. So my man was eating uh, tuna sandwiches. That pretty much just sealed the deal of I need a tuna sandwich. So I have one of those right here, but I also got my favorite, which is the Italian BMT on herb and cheese with all of the fixins. Of course, mostly all the veg. Chipotle, ranch, Southwest, but I wouldn't stop there. I would 
<coughs> have to bring my uh, my hombres, my friends in the food game back. Of course, I need to sauce it like a boss does. All right. It needs to have those two things. So, we go. Didn't get myself double meat, which I usually get double meat. And, uh, I feel as if I am. Um, regretting that decision and having to deal with the ramifications of there not being quite enough meat on this. Still very good. Got the sweet onion sauce too. Not sure if I said that. But it's doing its thing. Big time. I'm not sure out of why all of the craves of a cheat that I could have. That I ended up with Subway. But it is truly hitting the spot. So beautiful out. Just spent a few days out on the lake with the fam jamly. Good times. That's when you know it's good. When it's like that. When she's wet. I gotta say that eating bread, like full fledged, legitimate, just having like real bread, like a true bread, like a toasted or untoasted type bread, is both a familiar and wonderful experience. I understand why bread is like such an addictive thing for people. Here's the tuna. I got it on Italian, just like straight up white bread with cheese, pickles, banana peppers, onions, lettuce, and green pepper that's escaping. I told you guys in the past that I love tuna sandwiches and I still have yet to make a video on that. Where I make a few different renditions. I will say this. My tuna always has to be like chilled fridge temperature. I've never understood tuna melts. Something about hot, hot fish, like hot tuna, I don't know. This doesn't make sense to me. That's why I don't even get this bun toasted. Like I get the Italian BMT, I get that toasted, but this one, I feel like even just the toasting, the transfer heat from the bun to the, to the fish, weirds me out.
<laughs> Both very uniquely different sandwiches. Super good though. I love the crusty, that crusty top of that bun. Say this, summer yard energy, it's a whole mood. And also the fact that I live in a place that has Four seasons, I think, makes me obviously appreciate the summer more. And it makes me think, I wonder what it's like for people who live in all the time hot. Like, I wonder if sunny, nice weather, hot weather, eventually gets, like, annoying. Or, like, you don't appreciate it, you know what I mean? That's definitely what I love about seasons. Is that varietous change. Like fall is so good. I love fall too. When all the leaves turn and things and it's kind of gloomy, but it's still nice out too. Like the weather is like not too hot. Fall is pretty magical. But I guess summer's got to be ultimate, right? Summer seems ultimate. Like, it's got to be the best one, technically. I don't know. Hard to say. Fall's pretty good. Anyway, small little, like, cheat day thing. Just wanted to put up a chill video of outside and, you know, nothing too crazy. Just a chill little vid. And uh, have a little little summer sandwich with you, okay? On an, evening, on an evening vibe. So I hope you're doing well out there. I hope you're relaxed. I hope you're chill. And I hope it's all going as good as it can go in these weird times. <laughs> Till the next one. Eat good, live well. Stay true. Well, if it isn't slapper after slapper after slapper, I think, I'm pretty sure at this point, in these last few videos, I have re-upped in my new game with every hitter in my catalog <laughs> be it a pizza a subway or something else and tacos are to come next but in the meantime today we need a double meat bmt subway slapper many miss vickies salt and vinnies many sauces and a 15 weird questions featuring a Pepsi with alcohol in it because I'm not gonna lie I'm half in the sack so let's do it I'll meet you there come on in and let's have a time all right yo what's really good with y'all like I said in the intro, it's a bunch of things. A couple of drinks under the inf. It's all good, but Subway, slapper, chip, slapper, questions, slapper. So let's get to it. Here's the thing. First things first, before questions, I just need to do one thing with y'all is chipping a sandwich. We need to do this. We need to, together, adhesive glue some ranch, right? Because we know that these corporations, even though you requested many sauces, it's not saucy enough for a saucy guy. That's right. So ranch, hidden valve, a little bit of hot sizzy, just Frank's, Frank's Red Hot. And then on each sandwich, it isn't a Subway sandwich unless you're including the crunch. Of the chips now these are 
my own procurement. I procured these uh, at a store uh, that wasn't Subway prior to the Subway coming to me. And that's why I have so many of them. They're not in a small bag. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna enjoy one of the best types of meals in this muck game. Look at that. Double meat eclipsing, eclipsing the vegetation. And you can hear my ice in the background, my ice maker. That's for real, but we need that. And uh, we're gonna smash a delicious sub. And we're also gonna answer 15 off kilter questions from the internet. So, have you ever lied to a priest, preacher, or holy man? That's a holy situation right there. I'll say this. One hundred percent. No, I haven't because I am not of the church. I wasn't raised religious, and uh, I've never been in a situation where I would have to lie to one of those types of people. Question two, have you ever borrowed something and just haven't returned it yet? In commas, is it considered stealing if you plan on returning it? Double meat, beautiful. Subway. I'll say this. I've never borrowed something with the intent to not return it. Because that to me equals. like manipulative stealing, which I would never do. I respect people's property and I respect what they had to do to get said property and how they appreciate said property. And, uh, how my taking of their property would ultimately negatively affect their energy, like they would be pissed off. I'll say this in the brackets. Is it considered stealing if you plan to re on returning it? I'll say this. Any person who ever smoked weed or was like a burnout you didn't plan it and you always want to return it, but you never anticipated stealing the lighter in the circle. When you're smoking weed in the circle, the lighter goes around and for some reason, the person is like, I lost my lighter again. And you're like, oh, that sucks. And they're like, yeah, I wonder who has it. And then you go in your pocket and you're like, oh, I have it. Because you unconsciously, subconsciously just took it at random. So you return it. That's, a, that's how I feel about this question. Third question. Have you ever opened a rewrapped present that had your name on it? I 
I've never done that. I never broke into a present that was dedicated towards me. And come the day of supposed to open, you know, situation, reopened it. Relative to my lack of ability to just be patient and wait. I'd rather open it. I would always rather open it fresh and have the excitement in front of the person who got it for me because that's like a wholesome moment in life. The moment of somebody who thought about you who you are, what you would appreciate, and then you get to explode with energy and they get to feel that through them because they thought deeply about you. I would never compromise that energy because that is one of the most special things in life of giving a gift and that gift being exactly... what that person wants and that speaks volumes to the person it's like I thought about you I know who you are I consider you and then it's a validation their explosive response to the gift is a valid a validated return of like you get me and thank you so much for understanding me so, no, I have never done that. Hero or villain for a day in brackets. And what would you do? To be honest, I choose villain because my nature as a human is to be more hero. I gravitate towards the positive. And the heroish agenda. So therefore, I want to understand, I want to understand the villain mindset. So that's why I would choose villain, because I want to understand the villain mindset. As someone who defaults to hero and positivity and wants like goodness and greatness and positivity in the world to understand the other side, the evil, the negative. I would choose that so that I could have that understanding. Next question. Would you rather be alive and alone? Pretty much my current nature in a sense. Or about to die with a group of friends. 100% alive and alone. Because. Friends. Especially if I'm, if I'm about to die. It doesn't matter. If you're alone or with friends or whoever when you're about to die. Dying is an, is an alone thing. It's just you. You're going. Like, you're dying. 
and uh, to die alone is just exactly what it is. Like you're alone regardless, like re relative of friends or not. Um, so I'd rather be alive and alone because alone I find a lot of solace in my lonesomeness because I don't have exterior shitty vibrations and opinions. Like I get to just exist in myself and be alive. Um, dying with friends. Here's the thing about friends. There's a, there's a very, very few friends that are authentically your friend. Most people are trying to get something from you or fake it till they make it. Like, it's just, it's very rare to find an authentic rider. In this world that we live in. So, there's that. Next question. Whenever you ask someone how they've been doing, do you really want them to tell you the truth? Super interesting and funny that that came up in this questions because I didn't <clears throat> even look at these questions beyond the first two. I just knew that the first two felt energetically dope to me so this is why i made this video um that's cool that that question exists some people no i'll be honest some people it just it's formalities you know some people in your life you have to maintain with formalities like that but some people you truly care about and that question is very interesting because i just had a message with a friend someone i consider like a soulmate to me uh, that i met actually through youtube they found me for through, through youtube and we hung out in real life a bunch of times and uh we connect. We've talked a lot. In messages. And uh, I reached out to them just tonight, actually. And they responded back with like, like a canned, like a canned answer, like, like a canned question, like a like, a, how have you been? And I was like, yeah, no, 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 Like, we don't do that. We don't do that here. Like, you and I are deeper than that. Like, ask me the most fucked up thing in your mind. Like, I want, I never want our relationship, relationship to resort to standardized canned bullshit. You and I are solies. Like, I want you to always ask me the hard questions. And I want to be able to ask you the hard questions. And when I said that, they were like, oh my God, for sure, 100%, you're right. Like, and that's the thing is like, relative to that question of like how you've been doing like that's a canned question first and foremost i don't even want the canned question but if you're going to ask me a canned question i don't want a canned answer i want a fucking authentic real answer i want to really know i want to really know hey man thanks for asking i'm just barely surviving or hey man thanks for asking I'm doing fucking incredible. I'm doing amazing. It's it's different now. I I got out of my shit state and I'm like I'm thriving. I want real answers. 
with people who I fuck with. You know, I don't want everyday answers. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay, next question. Have you ever dropped food on the floor and then picked it up and eat it? <laughs> Pretty sure I've done it on this channel. What do you think? Of course, I believe in the five second rule. Next question. Ever had to run from the police? Yes, I have. And I've successfully made it. Back in the day, egging cars when I was in my teens. Would you rather know when you're going to die or how you're going to die? Easy answer. When. When means I can start living ridiculously accordingly to the time frame. How means nothing. I can't control how. How is inevitable. And if it's terrible, I can't change it. At least with when, I can manipulate my actions relative to the time, right? How, the thing with how is like, when is how? How could be, it's still a mystery. I'd rather live ridiculously purposeful and be out of control and do all the things knowing when. And act accordingly, intentionally up to that point. Are you keeping a really big secret from someone? Mm. I want to say no. I don't have any like interpersonal relationships that have like a detrimental big secret, but I will say this, this channel and the existence of it is kind of a big secret to a lot of people around me. Like familial ties. But I don't really view it as a secret because I don't intend for them to ever even know about it or understand it. Like I, 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 I feel like secrets weigh on you when you want somebody to know it in a way. And I don't give a shit if these people close to me know it or not. You know what I mean? Have you ever been outsmarted by another person? Of course. That's just part of life. No direct example, but 100%. Would you ever take a lie detector test with a loved one asking questions? Absolutely. 100%. Um, I come from a family that is 
and I'm very privileged and lucky to have it very accepting between my sisters, my mom, my dad. I really couldn't say anything <laughs> on a lie detector test. That would throw them off. I've also been so outwardly weird my entire life. That like almost nothing would surprise them. You know what I mean? And they know who I am. If I said something crazy weird about myself that was like really under the surface, I think they would recognize it in themselves to be like, yeah, I'm fucked up too, kind of. But I wouldn't <laughs> say it out loud. So that's what it is. Would you rather ask a question someone doesn't want to answer or give an answer to someone that doesn't want to hear? Mm, probably ask a question that someone doesn't want to answer because they could just cut it off and that's the end of it. Whereas if I'm going to answer a question that someone doesn't want to hear, it's, it's just like me trying to impart some sort of wisdom or idea. And they're just like, fuck you. Like I'm out, like, fuck, like I'm done. It's just like, it, 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 it's futile. Would you rather sit in snow while it's falling or dance in the rain? Well, I have experience with both because I've both danced in the rain and sat in snow when it's falling. And I'll say this, sitting in snow when it's falling. It's so peaceful as a Canadian in Thunder Bay. It's happened to me so many times. You're in your outfit, you're out playing, doing things, snowboarding, tobogganing, GTing down a hill. The skies open up and these flakes, these flakes, they just start falling. And they're so beautiful. They're both, they're all unique. And they just, they just barely touch you and they melt and they go to the ground and they accumulate. It's, it's angelic. It's so beautiful. It's, it's for those who live in hot climates, it's one of the best things of, of life. I swear to, if you've never experienced like winter, winter is terrible and hard and really rough most of the time, but there is a certain beauty found and associated with winter. On a fairly warm, you know, minus seven kind of night, it's snowing and it's so soft. It's amazing. It's actually amazing. Rain to me just feels kind of like, uh, it's, like it's abrasive. It hurts, you know, it's piercing. Do you like kids? I do. I do. Kids are dope. Not my own. Other ones that are cool and well adjusted and not shittily behaved. Those kids I, I fuck with. Do you want to be buried or cremated? I've always said cremated. Because I never believed in standard God. And I just thought to myself, burn my fucking body and if there's anything in here that will transcend, it doesn't matter if my body's here or not. But as time has gone on, I want to say... I almost want to be buried because I want this physical structure to be reincorporated into the matter of the earth. I don't want it to be preserved though. Like I don't want to be buried in a casket. I want to be buried. 
I just want my body to just get thrown in, the, in, in soil. That's like not even deep. You know what I mean? Like I want, I want to be eaten by the worms. I want to reconstitute the earth. Cause I'm, I'm part, I'm, I'm particle matter of this earth. Are you afraid of the dark? Fuck no. I used to be as a kid, but not anymore. I actually have a sleep mask and it's like, because I'm so up in the night, I usually fall asleep with like the early, like the break it down and shit. And it's like, I need, I need the dark to fucking fall asleep. So no, I'm not afraid of the dark. Are you at this moment romantically interested in someone who doesn't think of you in that way? No, not at all. Definitely not. Have you ever been arrested? Uh, I've been detained. We know that on this channel. How many people have you slept? <laughs> How many people have you slept with? This is a confrontational question when asked by someone you're in a relationship with, so be prepared. From the time that we get involved with, you, with each other, it should just be from now till later. Like, your past and my past are only going to toxify our minds. Like, so it's like when I get in new relationships or relationship or whatever, it's like, I don't want to know shit about your past. And I hope that you don't want to know about mine because that's digging into a territory where it's, um, it's just messing with your perception. It's like, how about we just operate from our newness together from here on out and see where this goes because we are currently this person. I hate when people are like, I want to know about your past. And I'm like, I don't want to tell you about my past. Like, I don't give a, my past is my, it's back there. It doesn't matter. Like, let's just move forward together in this and see if it is dope. Like, it's so stupid that I hate, I hated that shit. So anyways, um, I've been asked that how many people I've slept with and it's a lot. It's on. It's it's uncountable to be honest. Uh, I I've I've even sat and thought about it. Like tried to think about it, and I start losing names. Like I because there's repeat names. There's doubles of of people, and it's just like I can't. I don't know the number, and I don't. It's I don't give a fuck that it's a lot. I I like that it's a lot. I think it's a is it's like it's great. It's a learning experience, and and it's cool. Like it's, it is what it is. It's fine with me. Um, so yeah. What would you do after your boss fires you? <laughs> Depends on the situation. If it was like new or old or there was like tumultuous energy building up. Cause I've been fired by a lot of bosses and sometimes it was just like, it was literally like, thank you. I'm so glad to not even work here anymore. I wish you the best. And then some bosses, it was like, fuck you. You're a fucking loser. I hate you. You're a piece of shit. And also thank you because I don't want to work here anymore. And I haven't wanted to work here for a long time. So some of them got my grace and some of them got my distaste. And the distaste ones, I'm not going to lie, felt really the best. Have you ever purposely hurt someone just enough to make them scream when rendering first aid no ew what the fuck what girl what no when you do first aid it's like a reactionary measure of like oh my god this person's fucked up and i need to help save them in the best way possible ew if you intentionally tried to make them hurt in a time of them being like ah and you being like ah you're a fucking demon. Last question. Are you afraid of robots? Yes. Of course I'm terrified of robots. I'd... And we're about to enter into a new age society of like AI motherfucking robots with like guns and motherfucking like we're about to be outdone by robots. And it's tripping me. And yes, I'm fucking terrified of robots. They are creepy. I don't like them. And they shouldn't exist in terms of like being in power. Real last video. Told you I was a little sauce. Banger after banger. Till the next one. Y'all know what to do. 
Don't fuck with robots. Till the next one. Eat good, live well, stay true, and don't hurt people when you're trying to bandage them up. Okay? A piece. Uh. Get over here. <laughs> I feel like Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> this is basically my Halloween costume. Just my regular outfit. My COVID-19 slash hipster butternut squash fucking bitch made Halloween. You know what I'm saying? It's black hoodie. I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Hello, welcome to uh, the new normal in 2020. Does anybody else's life look like this? I look like... A robber every day of my life and I also can never see because I get foggy lenses with my mask on to any of those of you who actually wear like prescriptions out there I feel VV bad for you because let me tell you it's hard to avoid the up steam you know what I mean all right let's get some of this nonsense off and get to business okay mask off okay a couple things on the docket today I'm just out and about doing some errands and I wanted to pop in for some Subway. I know that uh, Subway is a favorite of mine and it's certainly a favorite on this channel. Absolutely, I feel like people do, do really resonate with my Subway videos. Now, another thing to note is the dude inside was a G and he hooked me up with Sweet Onion and Chipotle Southwest into-go containers for a saucy guy. So, shout out that dude in there. But we got ourselves a foot long rotisserie chicken, my favorite new sub there. Ooh -wee. What's up? That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's get into this. I'm not gonna lie, I've been craving this for honestly like weeks. This is like my jam jam lately. So, herb and cheese bread, absolutely necessary. The rotisserie chicken chunks, which is the new shit at Subway that's so good. Lettuce, tomato, cucumber, pickle, onion, uh, green pepper, and banana peppers. And then this is the new truth that's happening apparently here is extra sauce on the side. Hooked it up. If you've never tried the rotisserie chicken, give it a go. I went in there. There's the OG employee, he hooked up the sauces. But I got the new guy, the man, man in training, man's in training. And the new guy, and the, the, the OG employee was kind of like cleaning around. He's like, go help him. Like, it's your time to fly. So, there's that rotisserie. You can see it there. So, I got the new guy. He was super timid, which is fine. I understand being nervous at new jobs and shit. You don't want to make an ass of yourself or screw up or whatever. And uh, it just brought so many flashbacks of like memories of just that new job energy. Where you're just nothing second nature immediately. You don't know how to like you don't have your systems in place, so just bang shit out. So normal subway workers, like, they cut it long, they pile it in there, boom, toasted, and then they just throw veggies on. We've all seen, like, an experienced subway worker. They're just... The best of them are magicians, but fast. Like the true subway sandwich university motherfuckers. Those ones are legit. When they like smash it together quick, but it still comes out looking pristine. 
they're a rare commodity. Then there's the people who just straight up just buckshot, spread shot the fucking any every vegetable and it comes out just a mess. We all know those ones. But this guy was a different case. And I think it worked only my benefit. Because he's so timid and intimidated because he's new, he was so meticulous at placing each vegetable. Exactly perfect. So the sandwich came out like neat, organized, aesthetic vibe. I just went back in to get the chips that I was forgotten to be given again. I swear to God, I've never had this much ridiculous luck with not getting what I ordered ever. So there's like a new curse on me that's happening, but you guys really think I forgot the chips? No, it's time for a chip break. So anyways, my man's was so meticulous, but Loki Haiki, I'm like that. Like, you guys watch me put together food when I cook. I'm all about that presentation and like everything kind of being in its perfect little compartment, right? Let's see how this is. Southwest on Salt and Van. She works. So admittedly, when uh, when the rookie was cooking up my sub, initially I was like, I kind of low key wanna have OG do it, the big homie. But in the end, salmon came out like perfect, like really well prepared. So, shout out to that. Now, he did do one rookie error that even I know, just having gone to Subway a lot of times. I got a foot long, and he. Before he loaded anything on it, he cut it into two six inches. And I know for a fact that a true sandwich pro, he'll learn it in due time. But a true sandwich pro, sandwich artist, uh, you cut it length 12 and you load that bitch up. You don't, you don't cut it until it's loaded, right? And yes, I'm currently loading the other half of this with these chips. Because it wouldn't be a proper sub if we didn't put the chips on it. A little taste from our friend DP, that pep. Cleanse the palate and go in for second half. But yeah, even I know that. You can't be premature cut, cut you laden, you know? You gotta lay the goods downtown and then you make the cut there we go we got chips in there now now it's official on that note though tell me if it ever happens to you you ever have it where you get it loaded up and then they do the cut after but they don't get all the way through and then you go to open it and all like the guts spill when you pull it Not a pro move.
She's a crusty loaf today. Very crunchy. Delicious. But very crunchy. I swear half the fun of making these carvids is trying to be a stealthy parker to get as much privacy as you can possibly afford yourself just so that you know Less interruption, less distraction. Less judgy eyes. And right now, I am blending in. Backed in beside this guy, who seems like he eats all his meals and spends all his time in life living in a van down by the local Walmart. <laughs> because I am, in fact, parked. Outside Walmart. <laughs> Man. This bread, the crust, foliage right now has me riled up. That's a mess. Just bread dandruff. Oh wow. That's a no bueno. Mm hmm. Oh, I love a good impromptu subway hit. Can't have dessert till you finish your chips. Imagine that was ever a rule. Bitch chips are my dessert though. Really though, no sweet sky. I take a salt and vinny over a cookie any day. Any day. It's just a fact. I tell you, society is different now, man. <laughs> Very different. <clears throat> it's a topic for a whole nother time, though. Uh-oh, I got security rolling by. Shit, I gotta go. <laughs> Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true. It's Black Hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Yo, what up? What is good with y'all? Back with another one today. Pretty quick, impromptu. Double meat BMT. You can see that grease of the meat coming right through the wrapper there. I'm very excited to get into it. 
the subway crave was super super real today i had to have it had to hit it and uh i can't wait to get a bike going father ranch came through in the clutch brought his own bottle as well as screw these terrible napkins they're annoying i got myself a proper wipe and rag but i'm gonna bring you down show you the uh the up close and personal shot of it come on down yo can i get an amen on that though sweet onion double meat bmt all the fixings herb and cheese bread toasted everything look at that sandwich artist dreams oh up close and personal greasy hot saucy crunchy amazing bam all right you guys let's get into this look at that another quick little close-up for you and then we gotta go i just want to say one thing before i take a bite is i came into this video in a foul mood right i was gonna bitch i was gonna rant i was gonna rave and it had everything to do with youtube but i've decided i'm gonna take the higher road and just enjoy this food and know my real life's truth you know on this side of the camera and i also have to say that the girl inside that actually both the workers inside they just like brightened up my day big time they were both very awesome and talkative and made a great sub for me so thank you to them i know who i am and none of y'all weirdos on the internet can take that away from me <laughs> but cheers to that first bite of this delicious double meat amazing so mm. way better than my last subway video Yeah, the girl inside. She went the distance. She asked all the preferences. Asked if it was saucy enough, if I needed more sauce. I told her I'm a saucy guy. <laughs> load that thing up she agreed she was the same she, she searched through the tomato bin to find the non mushy soggy ones like the really fresh ones She actually gave a shit, which was very refreshing to see. Mm. I got sweet onion and Chipotle Southwest. And she put like two lines of the Chipotle in and then she's like, you probably need more than that. And I was like, yeah, I do two more. <laughs> the only way to get it is double meat.
finally at the point where I can actually <clears throat> handle a ranch bite. Mm. Man. But yeah. Somebody uh, took some a decent amount of time out of their awesome life yesterday <laughs> to write me a paragraph. <clears throat> Basically, trying to defame and decredit my character. and imply that I'm some sort of bullshit liar type thing. <laughs> Based off their perceived reality of me from the tiny percentage of information that I give you through this platform, they sat back and narrativized uh, my life from a predisposition towards me uh, of dislike and or hate probably mixed with a little envy and a little jealousy as well and that shit just pisses me off because my channel is all about just me being genuine and honest like I've admitted my lows you know <laughs> living in my sister's basement for a year my life falling apart getting sick I never lie there's no point to lie here and basically why it gets me so rattled or riled up is that I just really hate and people do this you know at work or in families and friendships it's low level low vibrational shit it's not cool it's not, not something to admire it's not some a way to be in this world <laughs> and that is To, uh, try to create a narrative on somebody's life when you don't know even 90% of their real life. It's presumptuous. It's not inaccurate. Like, it's a lot of things. That can piss you off. Especially when you're the person on the other side of the camera who knows the real story about your life. And when people do it to me, I just respond to them. In a sideways manner. Because the thing is, if you come at me sideways, I'm gonna come at you sideways. Put you in your place. give you a little talking to and then you get blocked and deleted the comic gets deleted your perception of my life doesn't get to live in a public forum on my channel that I control for other people to be influenced by that's just not going to happen ever
So bye bye home, man. Futile waste of your time. And beyond that, I get to respond. You have to read it, and then you don't get to respond. I win. I just I win. I win every time. So that's what had me feeling a type of way. And I know it's it's whatever. It's some random person on the internet that I really don't give a shit about. But it's the principle, the idea. And that it happens in real life. In workplaces, even in family and friendships. People, for whatever reason, will try to slander you and throw dirt on your image. Because they feel some type of way towards you. And it's usually coming from a place of insecurity, envy, jealousy, or the fact that they're just not fulfilled in who they are as a person at all. And the only place that they find meaning in life is in drama and to stir the pot and to be an asshole. Which is not my vibe. That is the furthest thing from my vibe. Now, don't get me wrong. I could be an asshole. A calculated, really talented asshole. But only if I'm provoked. If you pull me into that world and you want that energy, you want the smoke, I'll give you the smoke. You don't want to weaponize me with words. I'm a fucking wordsmith. I'm a master of words. I know how to link thoughts and murder with words. Okay? You don't want it with me when it comes to this shit. You know, I'm not going to go out of my way, though, to be an asshole. Like I said, if you pull me into that world, I'm liable to pull out and pop off. Like, I will defend myself and cut you a new asshole while I'm doing it. Real shit. This video took the turn from the high road down to the, the real ass road. But this shit just is all my mental, it's all my energy, and it has to be expressed. Because why? Because once again, I'm not a liar. I'm genuine. I'm honest. I'm real. According to this person, though, that couldn't be possible. <laughs> but it's true. I think I say stay true.
the there's nothing liable over here. Truth will set you free. You know? To wrap that though, just another big shout out to two girls inside working. And very, very nice. Great customer service. Did an amazing job making that sub. That sub was a 10 out of 10 fire. Amazing, hit my crave so hard. So I appreciate that, I appreciate them. I appreciate you for watching this video. And I extra appreciate you if you understand where I'm coming from, what I mean. And I also appreciate that if you're the type of person that doesn't engage in this stupidity, both online and in real life, it's unnecessary. So, keep being cool, keep being you. Stay positive. And until the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. And stay true. <laughs> right? Peace.